Hello everyone and welcome back to Tub Takes. This is a weekly VGC video podcast where we talk about all of the latest and greatest happenings in VGC. Today we've got some very special guests. First and foremost, we've got my co-host Alex. How are you doing? Doing good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to talk about two regionals this weekend. There's, there's a lot of action going on, so it's going to be good. Mm-hmm. And we've got two players who are coming off a top cut at the regional that just finished up. We've got our regional runner-up, we've got Luca. How you doing? Eh, I'm doing all right. You know, I'm still tired from going home at like 4 a.m. yesterday, but you know, uh, we're living. <laughs> and of course, we've also got 45 mice. Justin, how are you doing? Coming off a top eight performance at Peoria. About the same. I had patience all day, and then I had to go pick up my dog. So I've been at home for like two hours today. It's been great. <laughs> Yeah, that is that was part of the problem. With Peoria was it was it was so so hard to get to, uh, and so I mean, <laughs> it, 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 both of you guys said you know had a had a long commute back home. Yeah, like eight hours roughly. I uh, right after I got eliminated from Top Cut, uh, I got my prizes. Then immediately left. We drove about six hours home. Got home at like eleven. Went to sleep. Uh, woke up at like six six o'clock and then i had patience at seven so that's been my day (laughs) jeez Uh, well uh, we appreciate appreciate you you both being on yeah despite despite having very tiring days um and we're really (laughs) excited to talk about uh what went down at peoria but first we've got a couple um a couple housekeeping things i guess one housekeeping thing which is that um day two events which hosted peoria has actually announced signups for all of their regionals so san antonio knoxville and indy um those are those are the, the latter two being very far in the future, but I'm trying to find it. Where on the page was it? Um, like, huh. yeah, okay. So for San Antonio Regionals, this one's coming up in nine days uh, on the 18th of October. Registration is going to to begin. Um, so just uh, housekeeping for that. If you were going to San Antonio, be ready. Uh, the the regionals so far have not filled up other than Pittsburgh, so it hopefully will not be a concern if they have to sign up right away, but. I know a lot of people going to San Antonio. It's one of the cooler cities on the list, one of the newer cities on the list. And so, and it's right in the middle of the country. So it would not shock me if this one did in fact sign up. So we'll remind you again next week, but just be aware that uh, we do have a date for San Antonio as well as Knoxville and Indy, but those are way further in the future. Um, and yeah, do we have, are we going to talk about the comic frog, Alex? And you put it in the document. I did put it out. I mean, like, honestly, as long as we don't spend too much time on it. Um, but before like we it. move on from San Antonio, anybody in here going? Just curious. Uh, probably, yeah. Would you say, uh, Justin? I think my next tournament is uh, Knoxville. I don't think I'm not going to be able to go to San Antonio. Dang. If anybody doesn't smart money you for Knoxville, I mean, they're just throwing. Come on. <laughs> Literally Wait, I've gotten two top eights. I got to break the top eight curse before you can put smart money on me, okay? <laughs> but it's in the name. <laughs> it's, it's your, it's your um, hometown reach. Oh, yeah, okay. I just got that. Okay, my brain is yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> it's okay. It took me way too long to get that. I don't I don't understand what you're talking about. It's not called <laughs> Justin, Bill. What do, you, what do you mean? That's true. 45 um, minutes. Anyway, I will say, uh, I'm very I mean, maybe I'm San Antonio. Antonio. This, this is like next. It's yeah, it's next week, right? Not it this is, coming week or anything. Yeah, it is. So it is not this weekend or not this week. It is next week. So again, we will remind you again next week. But uh, yeah. just so you're aware ahead of time, you know, I know, especially, and I, and I said this before, like uh, a big part that I don't like about um, especially regionals, if they sign, if they fill up immediately or fill up very quickly, is that it sucks for people who uh, are working, uh, if, they, if they have unorthodox schedules or people who are coming from different regions and maybe have to wake up at crazy hours. Um, it, mm-hmm. it sucks that, you know, you have to book your flights way ahead of time. And then you, um, and then you maybe have to like, literally like take a day off work to, to register. So I am glad that they've announced it so far in advance. And um, it seems like a, a, hopefully a reasonable time for everyone. Um, at least, you know, I'm hoping to be there and I don't think this one will, will fill up. So no pressure, but mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. do want to make people aware. And I forgot to mention that I'm a, a maybe on this one. I was, Pretty interested because, like, you know, Regulation E uh, came out, and I was like, man, there's so many cool teams I want to try this format. I want to, like, go to more than one regional because I've only got Sacramento planned out. Um, and then I decided that I was just going to wait to see if I actually win money in Sacramento to, to book it. So if uh, Sacramento goes well, you might see me at San Antonio. Sweet. Um, I, will, I will be in San Antonio. Yeah. It, is, uh, it is an hour away from my house, which is great. So I will be, um, <laughs> I will be going. I am ferrying a bunch of people over from Austin, so... Don't ask me if my car is full. It is at this point. Um, but 
Oh yeah, can I get a ride? I like can, not just I can me, find Gina, you me ride. and Gina. Like I, I know enough people in Austin that like it, I mean I'm friends with all the locals here, and I don't think as many all of them know a ton of people. So if you are interested in flying to Austin, uh, let me know. I'll I'll add you to the Discord server or something, and I'm sure that someone is willing to willing to give you a ride down. Um, but. Cool, yeah. Adi. While we're on uh, while we're on stream here, do you want to work out the rest of the details? You know, just like your address. <laughs> I'm, and your I'm, I'm just letting people know. Like, I'm not going to be responsible address. if you book a flight, but I can I can help you out uh, trying to find uh, you know uh, a way to get there from Austin. And if it's a lot cheaper to Austin, we'll probably fly to Austin. Um, and also, Austin's a cooler city. You know, maybe maybe stay for a couple of days, hang out, uh, come play <laughs> poker with me and me and Rajan. Um, but mm. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, so let's. Let's talk about this Kitakami prologue really quick. The format that could have been... Uh, I don't think we would have uh, ever gotten this format. Um, but... I love how the format looks. It looks... It, so it, it looks fun until you... Uh, it's kind of tricky. You have to identify what the like most common mod is. And then you're like, ooh, maybe this would be annoying. Um, <laughs> I was like... Because I originally looked at the image, I'm like, whoa, this looks so cool. And then I was like, wait a minute, there's seven out of eight Blood Moons. Maybe this format's kind of annoying. <laughs> I mean, it's all fun at games until you take a life for a Blood Moon. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. That, that, uh, God, the attack name and the mom name is so confusing. Uh, but yes, um, yeah, just like the, the, I don't know. I mean, the, there's uh, there's no resists. I wonder if the Comos are running. There's no, like, Flutter main to be, like, terrified at a anymore. There's, I guess, we're Bombi. That's the one you gotta watch out for. Yeah. It, um, it's the third of the format, I think. It is yeah. pretty funny that Rabombi is, like, the third most used Pokemon. I do like that a lot, though. I like That's uh, so cool. I just like seeing what mons are enabled when Pokemon like Fluttermane and Iron Hands don't exist. Straight up. <laughs> it's so nice. So refreshing. Um, uh, like, Basket Legion, Gambit, Ogre Pond, they all look so broken without having to deal with those Pokemon mm -hmm. at all. It's already broken. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's, it's already broken. That's what I'm saying. Well, it's I, even more broken now. It's like Bisharp 2. Neu Neuvern. Neuvern has two uses in top eight, right? We've never seen Neuvern C play in VGC. I think. No. Um, so I think it was one in like 2014, maybe, but that was it. Solid uh, solid amount of Chandelier um, is another thing. Um, Ogre Pond like, was pretty damn common uh in the cut here but i think there's three teams with no two teams without no no maybe just one <laughs> i keep looking at the different colors one. so i keep missing them but i think the winning team didn't have one i think i can count six pokemon that are not ogre pond on that team dude rock ogre pond is the most prevalent that i see and that's really funny it's also really interesting to me that um the number of pokemon or the number of like names i recognize you know um there's at least a decent amount hmm Yuki Rotom and uh, Baradoru. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, it, it, it's not... It was just kind of fun to look at, like, you know, what, what could have been in a world where we don't have Paradox and Ruins. Mm -hmm. I was saying that this format looked so cool and that I just sound like a casual now where I'm just <laughs> like, ah, I hate OP Legends and Landorus. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, you know that if we had this format, people would be complaining about Blood Moon, but, like, mm. I don't know. That seems, that seems like... That seems okay, right? Like, especially... Yeah there's there it's, it's it's very it's probably centralizing it's very powerful but like i don't know if that's the, the worst thing you have to deal with instead of 70 percent usage flutter main like i'll take it like yeah I mean, at least honestly I, I do it for a couple months we've had plenty of months of flutter being uh where yeah. it is so every format will have a pokemon to complain about like it's not gonna yeah. change <laughs> yep mm -hmm. No, that is for sure. That is true for sure. Um, and I mean, it does look like there's still ways to deal with it. You can either have um, mm -hmm. King Gambit, as it seems like a lot of teams do have a steel type that way. And then you mentioned Rock Ogre Pond being common as a normal resist, too. That is kind of handy. Grim Snarl is a pretty good counter, too, with screens and then Spirit Break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can be annoying. Mm -hmm. True. Well, we yeah. see, my experience, anyway. We And we also, you know, we see, see King Gambit is, is, a, is a normal resist and very powerful. We see, we see a Bisharp on Maluka's team, which is super cool. Um, and we see Mimikyu, which can obviously take a hit, uh, no matter what. And so we got, we got a lot of cool stuff. I don't uh, know what the Neuverns are doing. Tailwind? I I found one image. Probably fastest Tailwind setter. This one's got Cloak, two flying moves. So if I had to guess, like Hurricane Tailwind, a normal move. T it's got Ghost on the team, so it could be Boom Burst. A like Terra Norma Boom Burst stuff? That's fun. Maybe. If you scroll down, Adi, you can pull up the set of the place team. That team seems to be one of the few with a rental code. I imagine um, it's 
Tailwind and Fire Water Grass Resistance. Just a couple yeah, of true. It's not bad against uh, a lot of the Ogre Ponds. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying my auto translate saying Ogre Pond well face. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, we probably don't need to talk about this one for too long, mm -hmm. but instead we'll move on to talking about the actual format that we're playing, Regulation E. I do want to give a quick thank you to to Zanzibar BGC Jeremy. Congrats on your uh, on your run and your top four performance. Uh, it was super hyped to see. And also, thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, but before that, we actually got to talk about casting. We uh, we got to oh, talk yeah. about the, the casting updates. So um, um, there was a uh, so a couple things at um, Peoria that I guess were worth noting. Um, do we have the uh, do we have the actual casting announcement in here now? Oh, sorry, I didn't yeah, grab that fine. one. No. So uh, this regional, uh, I mean, we've got a larger group of people now. You know, as Len gets onboarded, we we have you know Joe, Sierra, Necro, all those people. But uh, so one person who has been a mainstay is is Adam Doricott, Dawes, uh, and uh, I think that around Worlds, I remember hearing rumors that he was going to retire. So it was surprising to see him on TCG at this event. Um, but it looks like you know this is going to be his uh, his last event casting. I've heard he's still going to be around working behind the scenes, especially on TCG. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's been, he's kept, he's commentated so many, so many matches in BGC, uh, incredible matches in BGC history. He's been around for so long. He's been such a, so, such an important force in, uh, in growing this community. And so, uh, just wanted to say, you know, happy trails to, to Adam. Yep. And, uh, I think you also wanted to mention that, uh, I think Gabby's jumping on. I don't know if that was confirmed like a while ago or something, or if that was like confirmed in the lead up to Peoria, but Gabby is doing VG again. Oh, um, do we have Sacramento? No, 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 no. I just meant she's doing... Did she not do VG? Oh, she, yeah. she, she did VGC at Peoria, so it sounds like, you know... Peoria. Um, she's been doing Go for most of the last year, I think all of last year, and so it was interesting to see her kind of hop in as uh, as Adam transitioned off, and so... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to be a permanent thing. Again, we did see, like, Len come and cast Pittsburgh, and he's a he's a newer caster, and I know he's a West Coast player, so wouldn't shock me to see him uh, do Sacramento as well, but... I am curious to see if Gabby is going to continue doing VGC or maybe switch off between VGC and Go. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm out. We're still waiting on the announcement for the Sacramento team, so we'll uh, probably not get that here in this week of Tub Takes, but you'll certainly see them on stream this weekend. And so we'll. Uh, it's, it is a bit of a bit up in the air because there's just so many casters that they've had these days that it's just like who will be the ones that they're they're picking? Will Zhang be on it or will he be playing? You know, like I don't even know. Uh, it's it's a good problem to have. It's a <laughs> it's a really good problem to have, um, and yeah, it, just yeah. in general, honestly, like I'm very happy that they've again uh, the fact that uh, the fact that Len was also you know was which started to become a caster is fantastic. I I'm just so happy that there's a a pipeline now for um for grassroots casters to uh, become uh, casters for the Pokemon company, and that's becoming more and more common. It definitely seemed like there was a point in time where it was impossible where they had their set cast. And they did not really add anyone to it. And now we've seen over the last year or so, add, they had a, a bunch of great talent, um, a bunch of people like Glenn, you know, is coming off a regional cut at Fresno, right? He's a he's a very good player. He's been around for a long time. He knows the game very well. And so it's always really exciting to see that. Uh, and especially with Victory Road, now um, casting events officially in Europe, and they do all this incredible casting for World Cup and all these other uh, tournaments that they host. Um, that is another, av like a direct avenue from, all right, you cast grassroots tournaments for Victory Road. Victory Road has the connections with TPCI, especially in Europe. And then you start to see those those uh, those casters get elevated to an official role. So I just think it's good for the community as a whole, um, especially when you consider the community as a whole beyond just the the hyper competitive players. For other people to find their niche within the community and have that uh, the ability to grow that niche to the point where they are working for the Pokemon company. Mm -hmm. I just love seeing that we're having like more and more people like Len who have a high amount of knowledge of the game. I love people who have like an in-depth analyze like what's going on and can like explain it in a like good way. I think I think it's it's really really cool to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Len is uh, somebody that's an interesting case for me because I uh, would imagine he would play this one. Isn't he from California? Um, and so uh, like you know if if he's not on the casting team, I could imagine that Len would be playing. I think Len's from California. I can't remember for certain though. I think he is. I think he's a Norcal player. I'm not entirely sure, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> and this one is in Norcal, I think. Norcal, yes. It is It is actually north of um, of the Bay Area. 
uh, technically. So it is it is very much NorCal. Um, okay. Although although the meme that I suggested that was not taken um, was <laughs> was uh, was was more along that line. Is this one it? Hold up. I should not pull up random images from my computer and put it on stream. No, that's not it. <laughs> that's yeah, a- you really shouldn't. Just, <laughs> just put up the foot. Man. Uh, anyway. All right. This was Rajan's idea. I'll pin it on him now that uh, now that we're actually now that it didn't do well. You know, if it if it did well, maybe I would have tried to take credit. I, I, um, I keep it on the screen for like five more seconds at most and get it off. <laughs> keep on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, I have no words. I just <laughs> the medical side of thing. It just haunts me at night. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's just, keep me up. They keep me up. Man. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I was just scrolling through the uh, the channel uh, that we talk about tub takes and like what we're gonna be putting on the show and stuff. And I put that image in there as like a, a potential idea after Rajan suggested it. And I was just scrolling through there, and Gina was like, "Wait, what was that?" And then I was like. Oh, it it was one of the ideas. And she's like, "Well, it definitely got my attention." So I'm like, "Okay, I guess we're doing the foot." Just want to be clear. This was this was my joke, which is probably less funny, but also less gross. <laughs> I don't know why they don't have it in in the Bay Area whenever they do a, uh, a NorCal regional. It'd be really nice to to make it a little more accessible. But Sacramento is a lot better than Fresno, so we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah. that at some point. Um, first, we got to talk about the uh, the regional that actually happened, the first uh, major of Regulation E, which is of course. Uh, Peoria regionals, um, of course, like I said, we got two players who were in that top eight um, in this call. So we're going to hopefully hear a lot of insight into the regional. Um, but yeah, I guess starting, uh, I guess we can start with Justin. T- you want to talk about your experience at Peoria a little bit? Uh, sure. So going into it, I was really uh, focused on trying to beat like Ogre Pond Balance, as well as trying to beat more like Tornado, uh, Torn like stuff kind of my two things that I thought would be really uh, there, as well as like Chris, some, some Chris balance stuff. Um, I did not expect as much of the Chi Yu Flutter uh, Water Pond stuff, which is a core that we'll find out I did not really enjoy very much. Um, but uh, so my core is kind of built around that. I really like Frigoraph just because I really like blocking Grassy Glide Spam. I thought Trick Room was really strong. Um, I thought Blood Moon uh, Life Orb was in particular kind of way underused, and that was kind of the MVP of the run. The reason why is that Life Orb Blood Moon Blood Moon, about one shot's about anything in the meta right now. Um, I did Helping Hand, I think I did like 90% of King Gambit. It's it's a ridiculous amount of damage that you can do. Um, it's pretty bulky, Terra Grass, you can take hits pretty well. So for me, that was just trying to build around like a Trick Room mode, like a Semi Room team that could have a faster mode if needed, um, while trying also go to Trick Room to be able to punish all these teams. I wouldn't be able to stock Trick Room because you got Frigoraph and also Clefairy as well, kind of giving it support. Um, a lot of times you could just like set up Trick Room and then heal pulse your Fergaraf so that you get a bunch of HP or they KO your Clef and then you get a free swap into Ursa Luna. Nasty Plot gave it a bunch of uh, support as well as it just like made an offensive threat for people that tried to play passive during Trick Room and really heavily punish that. Um, the one Pokemon that I would definitely want to swap would be the, Ur- the Urshifu. It makes this way too water, water Pond weak to where it's like a 90 to 10 matchup. Even Jeremy played great, even if it's 50, 50, but it's like, it, it was a, uh, it's a very bad matchup, but overall, like I, it was, I thought that team was really strong. I thought the strongest part by far was for Giraffe, Clef, uh, Blood Moon and uh, Ogre Pond. That thing, I thought that carried like 85% of my matches. I was really, really impressed by that core. Everything else probably can be adjusted. I'm going to test some stuff because I do think the core team is super strong. It's just got to be kind of ironed out to kind of match. Um, the dogie is not part of the core. <laughs> Dogie's okay. Um, it was good for. Uh, I would definitely make a Terra Fairy if I was going to redo it, and I'd also probably do Gunk Shot over Poison Jab um, because I kind of lacked a damage button sometimes. And you saw that versus my sets versus Jeremy, where I had Okie Dogie on the field. It even lived a hit, but then it did no damage in return. Or if it does a Snarl, it doesn't really do much other than that. So it just kind of end that result. Um, yeah, and then the Urshifu I brought to like two matches, probably my entire set, um, my entire series really. And whenever I did bring it, it was usually disappointing. So I know that you ended up getting second and ended up winning, but at least on this team, it didn't feel very good. Um, but yeah, the, the core Trick Room part, especially for Giraffe Clef, felt really, really strong. Um, I would just need to have to adjust it to make it a little bit more balanced first and have a better Water Pond matchup. Um, and Goldango, Goldango's bad. I've had some people ask me for the rental, and I would feel kind of bad about putting this in public because I feel like the way the meta is shifting, 
boards. Like, I feel like Jane's team is super good. I feel that, um, like, the Water Punch, you Flutter stuff is super good. And I feel like putting this team out there when I know it's really weak to, like, very strong meta teams, I feel is, like, bad. I don't know why. <laughs> but I still, like, I think it was a good call for this tournament. But I would definitely have to make some adjustments to be kind of more sustainable long-term anyway. Mm -hmm. Did you miss having Drain Punch over Brick Break? Because I feel like Drain Punch so is better in, like, 95% of matchups. <laughs> Oh, I actually didn't. And the reason why, here's my thinking for why I went Brick Break, is that screens were kind of annoying for what I wanted to do, is that, like, uh, Snow and even, like, Grim Snarl, Gujra stuff, which I faced last round for my win and end, um, basically, they get up screens, and then I wouldn't be able to sweep during Trick Room. Um, so I felt that having Drain Punch felt more like a win more kind of button a lot of the times, um, and where Brick Break actually provided me from having a few bad matchups into a few, like, strongly winning matchups. That's why I ended up going Brick Break. It actually won me two sets because I beat Snow very easily. I do not think I would have been able to beat Screens, uh, Hisui, and Gudra on my win and end without Brick Break. So, yeah, I actually uh, stand by that decision. I still think it's good because without this, it really kind of would struggle to break through Screens pretty reliably. So, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I got that a lot that like everyone that saw that team was like, why didn't you do Drain Punch? And, and in some match most matchups, it would be better, but it, it doesn't shift the needle on enough matchups to where that I think that it would be worth it compared to having Brick Break, which makes at least two matchups that would probably be negative into actually very positive. So, I yeah. <laughs> really quick, want to give a uh, thank you to Kira's Corner for the raid. Appreciate oh, you guys Kira. coming through. We're just... Thank you. We're, uh, we're in the middle of weekly... VGC podcast where we we're just talking about the results of the last weekend's uh, tournament, Peoria. Uh, we actually have two of the people that made it to the top eight here. Uh, we're actually no, no, about no. To talk <laughs> no offense, no offense, Raja, and I saw that. Um, I, that's why I tweeted. I was like, everyone was like, I swear this team is not garbage because it looked like terrible in that matchup. Um, I did beat one Chiyu Flutter uh, Water Pond team, but it's just that's the probably the worst matchup, and I would have to adjust it. I've got some ideas, um, but I would have to. I'm not going to share those yet, just because I'm going to test stuff for probably future tournaments. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. A lot of people really enjoyed watching me get trashed on stream. <laughs> I, when they told me I was going to be on stream again, Top Cut versus Jeremy, I was like, "Do you guys just like watching me get shat on stream? Is that just?" They <laughs> just really enjoyed it. So it was. It was funny though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the match was, was, was hard matchup. to watch, and uh, it's not even like you played <laughs> okay. it poorly. It's just like, man. That is a that looked like a brutal matchup. Um, and it's pretty bad, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think your assessment's right because I I don't I think Alex posted the screenshot. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up right now. Uh, mm. the, the all the Chiyu Flutter Water Pond teams, they're all the same five mons. Like, <laughs> there's there's no, ten no, of them. I, no, to be fair, <laughs> Audi, that's Cut Explorer. I clicked those five mons. Um, yeah, yeah, but there's there's ten of them in top one twenty eight. That's like a ten percent of the field. Um, of, of high high placing players. Oh wait, you have you don't have the image up. You have a you have the thing. I have cut explorer. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's 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 ten of the it's ten of the top one twenty eight. A full ten percent of the field is running five mons plus. You know either you know I guess there's like a bunch of different things you can throw in that last slot. Most commonly King Gambit or Amoongus. Um, but this this is, seems like the week one team to beat. If I was going to Sacramento, this would be the team that I. Uh, and, and gearing up to beat or if i don't have a team for sacramento this would be the team that i'm um probably like trying to figure out how to get good at as quickly as possible just because it seems like a very consistent choice um and of which course, uh which way are you going are you going for uh king gambit you know <laughs> amoongus or the bug <laughs> we'll definitely get talking about that bug uh eventually and before we move on to talking about lucas run uh really quick adi i want you to go to the uh the results uh from victory road or whatever mm -hmm. and just look at that left column and scroll uh it's funny because it's like you have ogre pond ogre pond ogre pond ogre pond or shifu uh we'll talk about the teams that are lacking them we'll get to them later uh i just want you to keep going chi Yu, yeah sure uh keep going <laughs> keep <laughs> I, you gotta keep going just a little yeah there he is <laughs> oh i lost this on ladder today dude this team is scary <laughs> I actually haven't even opened it yet. Titan? I gotta see. What is the set on it? Is it it's on Melly Drum. It's Melly Drum, drum Ice Shard. I, I, yeah. I put it on the car ride to Peoria. I was like, hey, this is funny. That's cute. Uh, anyways, and then I saw it in May Day 2. I'm like, wait, what? It, it, he's real? He exists? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, it's, I, it's... I, whatever. Let's talk, about, let's talk about it now since we're looking. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was scary. 
They, they, I mean, you, I it, you set up really consistently. You've got double redirection. You've got the, um, you've got thick fat. So it's not like they can heat wave around your redirection. You're pr probably a little flutter weak. Um, but other than that, like, I mean, other than that being, you know, a big, you know, the highest usage, second highest usage mod in the format. But other than that, like, it seems, it seems very strong. I don't like wide lens on Sinistra, but, um, I, but <laughs> I, uh, be, yeah. like, the cool Sinistra interaction where you can, Belly drum go up to seventy five and then switch in your sinistra and go back up to full is very cool. Um, and if teams don't and like you are resilient to some of the common spread moves and you know you have a, a functional four x resist to heat wave if you terra uh, and you you could again functional weak uh, resist to goldengo if you terra uh, and so you are um, mm -hmm. it does it does seem like a pretty cool uh, concept um, and uh, obviously like making day two and then going what eight six not the not the best showing. Um, but still, like I, this this can this uh, this core at least the Sinistra to Titan um, core where you know you belly or it doesn't have to be Titan. We saw a Wolf do it with Snorlax. I was gonna Just say, yeah, yeah, I've been waiting for. Uh, it's, it's very cool. I've been waiting to mention that that like you know people can find inspiration from anywhere, and maybe this was all uh, original. But like it does share a lot of the uh, pieces from Wolf's team, the Clefairy Sinistra supporting a Belly Drummer and a Como O. Wolf did also have that Scarf Lando. It's just the Iron Hands and the Titan are different here. Um, really, the Rillaboom originally was a Iron Hands and then Snorlax, obviously, the, the Titan replacement. But mm. I think I do like the Titan a bit more, mainly because I'm not a huge fan of Snorlax's coverage. It was you know mostly going for normal and ground. And I, I saw that issue with Ursaluna, the regular one, back in like Regulation D. Where, you know, you have these nukes that have very common immunities in the format. If a Flutter switches in, you do zero damage. If a Lander switches in, you do zero damage. Um, whereas, like, spamming ice and water, not only do those have, like, not very uh, common immunities or anything, um, you're also using a priority move. I think that's just really strong with a drum Pokemon. So, I love this idea. So, Titan, uh, I imagine that this could have been a menace for the people that were not expecting it. <laughs> Like yeah. I wrote a Frigoraph, you just it's, it covers the ice shard matchup, Belly Drum. Yeah. Now, yeah, that is why you were running it, right? You said. Uh, yeah. I forgot. I maybe didn't mention it earlier, but yeah. Can we talk about how there is uh, no Sinistra in Top Cut? Actually, there is zero Sinistra. Um, Roshan, you don't get to run Thick Fat Azumarill. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, you what? just pick your favorite Thick Fat Belly Drummer and put it in that <laughs> slot. We're not running Azumarill. <laughs> Yeah, the highest placing Sinus Joe was top 32. That's rough. Because there were it, it, um, yeah. four in day two, which isn't huge. But um, but yeah, they did not really convert in day two. Uh, one ten four, 4 and then the rest kind of did worse than that. Yeah. Man, we were talking about it being it like one of the limitless tournaments beforehand. Maybe that um, Safari Zone one was showing that, oh my god, there actually is another thick fat belly drum on <laughs> Ariyama. <laughs> <laughs> Why are there so many thick fat there's, belly there's drums? Azu I guess too. Azu has thick fat. No, you I know Azu said it. <laughs> right, I know. If you, if you want a belly to drum, you need a belly to drum, so you need to have thick fat. Yeah, that makes sense. You know what? Honestly, <laughs> fair point. Um, I think Walrein is a thick fat Pokemon that doesn't get drum. It does it? Does it Man. not get belly drum? I feel like it gets belly drum. No, I think it doesn't. Um, it doesn't. Hold up, time to find out. Um, but yeah, Sinistro was one of those Pokemon that uh, was looking oh, it like it was belly performing drum, right? <laughs> It does get belly drum? It's, oh it's my an egg god. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should look later. Every thick fat mon also gets belly drum. It's definitely gotta be a thing. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, oh, I found one. I found one that definitely does not get drum. Uh -huh. um, that's Mamoswine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That was, that was <laughs> not the drum too good. Um, yeah, and then also it looks like, uh, oh no, only Lechomp. No, oh, oh, Uncle Lone does also have thick fat, the no drum. Uh, Grumpig, another thick fat, no drum. Okay. That might be it for like fully evolved. Oh, Appleton. Appleton, another thick fat, no drum. Um, it's but it's nice. funny how they line up so often. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, Sinistra, a Pokemon that definitely was underperforming, and I'm not surprised to see it kind of do poorly. Um, hmm. And yeah, uh, I guess um, 
Sorry, we're not going to put it off any longer. We'll talk more about the the results, but let's talk a bit about Luca, your run, and your team. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I mean, I made this team basically like the first week of the format. Uh, you know, it was mostly just like I, I was just thinking like, well, a bunch of new grass types were just introduced. I think Torn just looks really strong because you resist the grass damage, and you also just Torn's just really broken. Yeah. Uh, so I just basically was like, okay, well, I'll, new toy syndrome. I'll just put on Ogre Pond as there as well, just because because you know Tailwind plus one Ivy Cudgel sounds you know really broken. So I'll just put that on there. Uh, and you know it it, it kind of just kept building off of that. Uh, I just put our Shifu because I think if you don't have our Shifu on Tailwind, you're kind of throwing. Uh, mm -hmm. Because like you know way to stop Tailwind is you just try to protect through it till the Tailwind's over. But our Shifu doesn't care about that. So. <laughs> uh, it just felt like it made the most sense, and I just rounded off the Tailwind Core just by putting Flutter, because I was just like, this is like the most amount of damage possible that you can just put on a Tailwind Core, and I was just like, I, I don't think there's like any reason to like not deviate from this. Uh, and then, you know, Lando was obviously like rising up in usage because like all the uh, grass types everywhere. Intimidate was just like actually usable now because their Shifu was dying down in usage, but like all the grass types were rising up, so like Intimidate felt really, really strong. And I just, and also it was great to see the King Gambit was finally being good against. I was like, I have to use him again because why, why, why the hell not? Mm hmm. Yep. I got to ask, did you win the Choice Specs Flutter Main Lottery? Did you click your last move? Um, like, uh, yes. Yes, I did. I fought a Lily Cole size fan player. And in game three, because in like in the first game, they just like led Crest Luna. And I did, and for some reason, Crest Luna players never protect Luna turn one. So I just attacked into it and knocked it out. Uh, turn one. So in game three, I thought they wouldn't let me do that again. So as they protect Trick Room, I Trick Room with my with my Flutter main and set up a Swords against my King Gambit, <laughs> and it won me the set. <laughs> okay, okay. So I will not change. It won me the one set I needed it to win versus Trick Room, and I I wouldn't change the fourth move just because of that. <laughs> sure. Uh, okay. Nice. Nice. <laughs> um, but basically, like this team in testing felt really strong into a lot of the meta like you know like the ogre pond like balancey stuff that we had been seeing a lot like it felt really strong into that just because like for shifu behind tailwind if you can get rid of like ogre pond wellspring it just kind of like rails through the rest of the team uh and then also the big the big thing about that team especially with like the king gamut version of that team there is no fairy resist on that team so you can kind of just get away with uh like terra terra fairy and your flutter main and just like either setting up Tailwind to just avoid the speed booster Flutter Man and just dealing insane damage with Thousand Gleam, or just like a lot of times you can just lead like Ogre Pond Flutter Man and just Terra Fairy fo uh, follow me Dazzling Gleam and just like they kind of struggle. Like if she used like not there, I think that's like the only thing that kind of goes good into that. It just struggles to get past that because like it, it, you just takes too much damage because you don't have any resistance. You have to commit a Terra on either hands to fire Terra or like Lando to flying Terra to get rid of Ogre Pond. It's just like, it felt so hard for that composition to like beat the tools that this team had. And that was like the only like, you know, meta team that felt like was like coming through, you know, early on because there aren't really like, you know, well-defined teams yet because it's a new format. So that was really like the only team I felt like I had to beat. Then I just uh, added what I thought would be good text into like Trick Room. Like I think Sasha Shifu, I, I kept hearing people saying that like Sasha Shifu isn't like it's like uncommon and stuff like that. But I think it's just, I think it's just broken. I think having a Sashmon on Tailwind is super super important, especially for Trick Room matchups because yeah. like I fought like three or four Trick Room teams and Sasha Shifu was incredible into all of them because it was able to just take the one hit it needed to take and then just deal damage under Trick Room, then protect the stall out Trick Room. Like it was very very valuable for those situations and also just staying in on like Flutter mains and terrible. Uh, terrifying blast landerus like it's just really good for like a fast offensive team to have a sashmon and i think or just fits the bill super well mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah i think that's a, a very like underrated uh aspect is like having enough uh ways to get through trick room because you know trick room teams have a, a, a lot of support tools like you can't always prevent the setup of it and so surviving just one trick room uh means that you can just you know flip the script and just go back into offense mode once you do Sash yeah. and protects are going to be the main tools to let you do that. Yeah, it was mostly just like surviving, and you can see the team has four protects. So it was just literally like surviving a hit, protecting, getting knocked out, protecting, and just like if Shukum ever dies down and I had like two Pokemon left by the end of it, then I usually win. 
So that's just basically how I try and beat it. It's just like stalling the trick room out and hoping I have at least two mons left. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, a, it's actually funny, like with the team before, it was up until the day before the event, it was a salt vest landers for the longest time. Um, but there was like, it just felt awkward because it felt like I had to rely so much on uh, Tailwind going into the event. So, you know, in the car ride there, I was actually trying to test, is there a way to keep making AV lander as Lorca? Do I have to switch to a uh, choice scarf? And I was so down bad at one point, I had a electric Terra AV lander as my builder to try and round up matchups. Uh, don't do that, by the way. It's very bad. Electric Terra. <laughs> It was it was supposed to be a neutral type, and also you could hit or shifu when it uh, water terra with terra blast. Mm. <laughs> don't, don't do it; it's not worth it. Man, um, just snap them. <laughs> uh, but I just eventually changed it to scarf because it allowed me to uh, have a mode without tailwind. Because uh, like especially early on in the tournament, like I did, I think for like my first five or six rounds, I didn't even bring torn or for the most part i was just bringing fluttermane lando uh king gambit ogre pond because that just has because you have a lot of speed with scarf lando with flutter and with priority on gambit you have the follow me redirection to help gambit get set up and support your fluttermane and your landers as well like it felt like it had a lot of strong tools to be able to deal with like teams that i wouldn't necessarily want to bring uh tailwind into so like i really liked that the team had like two modes that could go and it could either go like the setup mode without tailwind or it could go in just like the hyper aggro with tailwind mode mm-hmm was the uh, follow me on the uh, fire pond? I've not seen that actually too much. It is so unbelievably good. It is like I think you. Sh I think you should always have follow me on it. Like I think if you're if ogre pond's gonna be like your main setup sweeper, then sure you can forego it for like swords dance, like you know how Shiliang and uh, Justin Tang did with like their uh, double tier support for it. But mm -hmm. like I think if you're like not setting up with like always use follow me. Like moves like stomping tantrum and other things like that are like never like that coverage is never worth how good follow me is. Uh like it just supports all your other mons so well. <laughs> if you don't commit to Terra the Og like I don't I think I committed Ogremon Terra like only two or three times just because I was like tearing another mon and just supporting it with follow me was just so much better. Like I I know like in, in, in especially like in past like VGC formats, you know, people use like Follow me on Lucario, a mon yep. that's incredibly frail and has weaknesses to like every common type in the format. But follow me was just so useful that you ran it anyways. Uh, it, it, in, in a way, it feels like fake out, where it's just like you know, even if it's on a frail Pokemon, it's just about buying a turn for another Pokemon. And yeah, that's like the really nice thing about it. I, I am a huge fan of follow me on the guy. It's it's definitely like the best way to go with it and it also just gives this team like more modes it like it gives it more versatility like it doesn't feel like just like a set up tailwind hit buttons kind of team like it feels like it actually has versatility and like the way it can approach matchups uh it's it was specifically really good into chen knight because uh my ogre pond is actually very very bulky it can take uh, uh dragonite's a speed most of the time with chen pound the field so my matchup would just be able to have Ogre Pond Fluttermane into that matchup, but just follow me the E speed. I just take the double up from the Chen Knight and just get a uh, free Dazzle off, which was really good. Uh, so like I would that 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 was like trying me trying to handle that matchup was making it just really bulky. You can take Water Terror Surging Strikes from her Shifu. Like it was just really good for like redirecting things and just supporting the team super well. Like I really think you should always run follow me on Ogre Pond if you can. <laughs> Interesting. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, outside of that, uh, I ran into most of the matchups I wanted to in the uh, tournament, and it did really well into all of them. Uh, but besides James, well, well, we can talk about that later. But besides James, <laughs> <laughs> I like Rajan points out that he's in his favorite. Did anyone part have a good matchup into James? <laughs> what was that? I think. Did anyone have a good matchup into James too? I think Bob's beat James. I think that was his, his one loss, and so yeah. whatever, whatever they were. What was about. Bob's running? That's a good question. Was... I, it was just the uh, I think it was just the Gambit uh, Chiyu balance. The same team as um, as Zanzibar up in top four, Jeremy yes. Parson. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, I obviously there could be EV differences, but I'm pretty sure like it's probably mostly similar. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, it is that. Uh, Rajan mean, was commenting on the uh, the six or not the six, the five offensive Terras on your team, Luca, and uh, I'm looking at all of them and I'm like, nah, these are all defensive Terras. <laughs> like, King Gambit's no longer quad weak to fighting. Landris is no longer weak to water. Flutter's no longer weak to uh, to Shadow Ball. It resists dark. Yeah. Um, Urshifu no longer weak to fairy or flying. Ogre Pond no longer weak to uh, no longer neutral with bug. You know that's the big one there. <laughs> um, 
I I love offensive terras that also couple as defensive terras. So like, I I, I love that like the, most of the team. It's like it, it generally it is helpful more defensively. Like it, especially for a Shifu floater and gam, uh, gambit, I think most off, more often than not it helps them defensively to just tear into their offensive types. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, it also helped me fulfill my dream of having a team with all different terra types because I don't think I did that before. <laughs> yeah, there actually does end up being a lot of overlap. It's pretty common, huh? Uh, I, usually, I mean, I swear I had one time a team that had four water terras, and I was like, "This looks so." Bl I don't like. I don't like how that looks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Now, now it's like fire. I swear, I always end up with too many fire terras. Yeah, fi fire is so good to fire ogre pond. Dragon's kind of coming up too. I, I kind of dragon's I funny. I, I kind of wish I had like dragon terra uh, on my torn for a few matchups, but I, I liked poison just because it was like neutral into like uh iron hands uh chen pao stuff which i didn't like fighting too much but i liked poison terror for like that kind of specific scenario just because you can like intimidate switch out uh take a hit from like both mons with citrus berry and just stay on the field longer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so i guess we do eventually got to talk about the team that uh that won the event actually won the event so <laughs> let's talk about james's team yeah i do uh, i do gotta say i think james's team is a bit of a strange one like it's like cool that it has like a bit of uh like it's got different pacings in the team you know like you know offensive slow uh it's pretty cool yeah mm -hmm. rajan and i were, were talking about it on stream when he played uh and trying to like figure out exactly what i was trying to do obviously we didn't have the team sheet at the time um but you know this is this torn Feels like it's often accompanied by uh, by Specs Goldie, so it's interesting to see a nasty pluck Goldie without any um, like traditional setup mons. But then of course you got Iron Hands and you got Ogre Pond, which is like maybe the best defensive core in the format somehow. That two mon core, um, and so you do actually have a lot of flexibility. You've also got the Rain Dance Torrent and Double Water, um, which is which is super cool because you essentially have your own Rain Mode, um, and mm -hmm. you know the the Terra Water Ivy Cudgel and Rain is. Uh, you know, you don't get the attack boost, but you also don't die to any of the special attackers. So into a lot of teams, that's just a, a mode in and of itself. Um, and so those are like the uh, the two standout things to me on this team. Mm. Uh, you've also got the Terra Dragon Torn, which is very cool. Again, uh, we're, you're just talking about how that was a potentially cool choice. Um, but yeah, those are like the main like interesting choices. But I don't think that we've seen, or at least I've seen, these six before even though all these individual pokemon are pretty common uh i'm pretty sure james has just told me that he just took it from a japanese website that's funny <laughs> it's just that's just funny. took the team from the. i think he just took, said he either took it or to merge two teams together and just formed a team from that that is awesome um i mean it worked honestly like i was looking at it and i was like huh i think james is probably like the only person uh actually and check cut explorer to put together ogre pond water and urshifu water you know um i feel like nobody else was doing anything like that uh, mm -hmm. going down going down looks like three people in the tournament did it one person in top 32 and one person in top 64 um yeah and i think uh aaron grubbs had a pretty similar team uh, don't know if uh yeah, I don't, honestly, yeah, it, it's very similar. It could be, like, maybe the original team if James did actually combine things. We'll have to wait for James to put out a team report inevitably. I mean, um, if you got the... it from a from a Japanese website, then Aaron might have also got it from the same place. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh... But, yeah, that that's, like, one of the main things that stands out to me is the double water, and supporting that with Green Dance is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, especially, you know... Just like in a in a meta that's like so grass focused, uh, going for the the double water approach is probably something that people weren't ready for. You know, a lot of the people's you know I was saying myself like you know I want to like use fire as a good defensive terror right now, and that's like you know really uh, capitalize on that. So yeah, um, I mean besides the grass types, water is just still good into everything else. And you have torn. You know, you set up the rain. You you bleak when storm the ogre ponds without missing. You also have intimidate with arcanine. You're like. And a Dragon Terra on uh, Gold Dango. Like, I feel like there's some. It had a lot of tools to deal with uh, Ogre Pond. Mm -hmm. I feel like you just get, have the tools to beat Ogre Pond and just kind of 
rain, water, move your way through everything else. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the one set that I did catch up James is before, because I didn't have much time for the rest of them, was mm. uh, the one in uh, Swiss in day one. Mm. We faced the, uh, that was, those were his cr uh, car shot, uh, cross shots where he had his uh, um, enamorous team. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, James was just looking like so dominant. I mean, James only lost one set the whole tournament. That is yeah. insane. Mm -hmm. uh, the story about Carl, Carl Schatz is an amazing player. He's like an NPA legend who went eleven and zero. But he like he went to the tournament basically just to troll. Like he didn't. He wasn't actually being serious in the tournament. He just brought Pokemon that he thought he liked. He's mm -hmm. not going for worlds or anything. Right up going like six and two, um, and I think he finished five and four. Uh, I think he finished uh, five four, yeah, because I think he got yeah. hacked pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but he, just he, going that far with just a team that he was just trolling just to have fun with is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and in it on stream versus James, um, it's like triple fairy versus Goldango is just it's not going to work out well. Yeah, no. <laughs> and that was our uh, that was our analysis of it when we were watching that set on stream was just like, yeah, man, he he did not have a have a Goldango response, but. I think we also saw the um I think we also saw the set that, that Moxie was on stream. Moxie Boost was on stream around three. Uh and also it we were just looking at it, we we're like, wow, like Goldengo Shroom just kind of clears. Like we were just like, yeah, like I feel like Goldengo really was even though it didn't have uh, a crazy I don't think it had any other crazy good results. Actually I should check that out. Um no one really brought it. That was the I think was there was the, only I think it was only two in day two, two or three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was just James like, and, and and Dylan Salvanera, but that was the Pokemon to me that, uh, while watching the stream, stood out to me as oh this mod is is still really good and people are not using this enough. What what, mm -hmm. what, what James James told me after the tournament that Goldengo was either the best mod or absolutely useless and there was no in between, like mm -hmm. it either it's good into the team or it is just not at all good into the team. Okay, so it was. Uh, it's it's weird to say for such a Pokemon that like a Pokemon that's been so strong all year to see it reduced to maybe a matchup mon, one that's like fishing for the the right time to come out. But obviously, yeah. Steel Ghost typing on a Pokemon that can't be hit by any status moves that's gonna you know find the right spot sometimes. Uh, and uh, obviously, James would put it to good effect. You know, knew knowing when to bring it and when not to. Mm -hmm. You know, it was still one of the six Pokemon on his team and. Got him all the way there. For sure. I, I did trust uh, Goldengo some beforehand, and I thought I thought that Terra Dragon. I couldn't find a team for it that worked as well as James did. Obviously, I was testing more with screens, but I, the Goldengo does feel good in a lot of like non Chayu Flutter matchups, basically. Yeah. And it, it was really good versus my team because it's it's always been good versus like kind of Luna Trick Room if you have the right support, just because if you get up a nasty plot or, or even two, it's really threatening to both Luna and Cress. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It also resists the hyper voice because steel type, even if it like, hit through the ghost type. So like, right? It feels like cheating. Yeah. Nothing's allowed to resist Blood Moon. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I, was, I was looking at the list of Goldies and I saw the uh, the one He Sweet Zoroark, and I had to pull it up. And this is a so wild set. It's got it's got a roar. <laughs> roar? It's a it roar. <laughs> it's a roar. -war. An earthquake. <laughs> It's so funny. Oh, it also has comeuppance, a move that every time we look up the like That's Gen nuts. 9 moves list, someone's like, what is this move? This is a move that exists? If I can name my complaint with this team, it's the fact that if you turn into either Bundle, Lando, or Ogre Pond with Zoroark, you know immediately that it is or isn't because they all have things that proc when they come That's in. True. Like, yeah. literally, you can only turn into Goldengo or Ursh without like it being noticed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me and John Who built a, a Zorark team early in Reg D, and like you, I think we made sure that there was only one Pokemon you couldn't disguise as because limiting yourself like that just means you can't get any up to any shenanigans. What the whole point is shenanigans? Yeah. You got to run a Moongus with a Zorark. One of my first teams I ever like posted on Reddit uh, was like a Zorark uh, a Moongus team, and it was super fun just to troll people on ladder, and they get very mad when they're it's like. Mm. It's on it's a Zorark. <laughs> so. The only time I touched Zorark was with I used it on a Dozo team to to bit. Yeah, to Dozo's like a good one too. I hate those games. I hate That's, it's such mind games. I hate it. It's devious. <laughs> let's uh let's talk about uh Tang's team um in top four. Um mm -hmm. we've talked a lot, uh, a bit about uh the other team in top four, Jeremy's, so but we'll get to that next. But um the main thing that stands out here is bundle. 
Uh, we mm -hmm. saw it a bit last weekend in that Safari Zone tournament, and uh, it making a uh, strong comeback at this tournament. Uh, how strong, actually? I don't know how it was, bundled it overall. It was round. I don't think it was that common. Oh, it was 21 but, uses. That's that's pretty common. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it made it up to two appearances in top 16. Not too bad. Uh, and then one in the top four, obviously. Um, I mean, One-shotting both Lando and Water Ogre Pond is very useful to have. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was definitely the right time for it to come. Everyone was running Scarf Lando. Scarf Lando was like on so many of the Landorises. Let's, let's actually, while we're just what talking is... numbers and stuff, that was... Almost 59 all. of the 74, like such a large percentage of landers are running Scarf, and yeah. um, those landers are going to get very scared when they see an ice type that is faster. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Bundle, uh, looks like it was in a good spot coming into this tournament with how much um, Scarf Lando there is around. Um, surprised not to see more of it, but like not too surprised to see at least one deep run from it, so. Um, yeah, and then... Uh, other than that, you know, I, it just feels like a bunch of, you know, strong meatballs, whatever, good Pokemon. Just the, yeah. the, <laughs> the Life Orb Heatran, a little bit interesting. Definitely uses Icy Wind well, like I'll say. And then mm -hmm. um, let's talk about Jeremy Parsons' team uh, so that we can just knock that out. We've talked, we've alluded to it plenty, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll just kind of cover this archetype because it does seem to be. The new, 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 team. new, new balance, or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Yeah. Very familiar <laughs> with this team. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, like, three separate, like, I, I, I'll, I'll rope myself into this, because I made, like, I think this exact composition, like, the first week of the format, but I think two or three other people also did, just coming yep. up with the exact same sets, and, like, I, like, I early on topped the ladder with it. I think then UB Slow, like, got really high up on, like, the in-game ladder, or, like, a tweet about it or something. He was then a Brian Yu with the tournament and went to like uh, beast coast i think it just pe people came up with this exact same team all at the same time and had very good performances in different places that it just kind of crept into everyone else's circle somehow yeah i, I mean, think the main thing did that... get number one in the in-game ladder granted that was not yeah. with that with the uh the entire pool of pokemon it was just with ogre pond and the the lousy three uh loud yeah. with the regulation d but still i mean the this is this is four of the six Pokemon that are traditionally in the core, and then two Pokemon that almost everyone has put as one of the last the, the last slots in either King Gambit or or Shroom. So this is functionally the same team. I don't know um, what the order of operations was, but it does seem like this C team, the, these five, uh, a lot of people came up with the same five um, independently. Yeah, mm -hmm. Or maybe not independently. I don't know. Um, but these five seem very yeah. powerful, and at least for a day one comp, uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to do better than this. So mm -hmm. I do think it is, it is, uh, you're going to see a lot of this in, in Sacramento. Yeah. I think I, one of the, the, the teams that I played that had this core that I actually beat, um, is because they didn't have Snarl Chi Chiyu. Snarl Chiyu makes the Trick Room matchup like a lot better, especially like, uh, Armor Rose if they don't have like White Guard or something like that, because it just really just wall size spam and stuff like that. Or even if they have Blood Moon, it's hard for them to switch it in safely if you're just spamming Snarl. So I thought that's, I think that's the better move. I saw one of them, my face had Psychic and it made the matchup much, much easier. Um, yeah, uh, so if you're running Specs to use, definitely have Snarl as your last slot, in my opinion. My, my fun fact about Psychic on Chiyu is that, like, I was considering this team for Peoria, and when I was testing it, uh, I would really wanted a way to deal with Iron Hand, so I was running Psychic, Psychic Terra on my Chiyu, because <laughs> it can wow. actually Iron Hands. Because it can... Just overheat it. <laughs> No, but no, Psychic can genuinely one-shot it. Overheat doesn't. <laughs> what about Terra Fire Overheat? I think That's Psychic kind of is more when you Psychic Terra. What about Helping Hand Choice Specs <laughs> Terra Fire Overheat in Sun? I mean, if you can get all that on the field, good for you. <laughs> you know. With oh, and Beads of Ruin. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that one. <laughs> that one might be hard to get on the field, uh, you know. That, that's the yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing I would like... I, I I don't know if this would be an adaptation to make on the team, but like when I when I was testing around that, I think like ice punch on hands could actually be really useful because I think it might be his time. I, I think if you don't bring Gambit, Lando can kind of be hard to deal with sometimes with this six. Mm -hmm. so I feel like ice punch could be a good adaptation over heavy slam, just because I feel like the team can deal with flutter a lot more sometimes than it can deal with Lando when you don't bring Gambit. So I feel like I don't, I, I think I think it'd be a cool adaptation to make. 
It's funny that you uh, you mentioned that when you said earlier you were like, but the team also doesn't have any fairy resists. Uh, yeah, it's like it, it's a bit counterintuitive, but like yeah, I mean, it, it, that, that's just like the the weakness of the team, I think. But like you have fire terror on hands, you can tear your ogre pawn. Like it, I think it's just more on like what you feel more comfortable beating. But like I was like struggling more versus Lando than Flutter when I was testing, mm -hmm. so I was just a bunch. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. with a terrors is basically a flutter resist anyway. Yeah. <laughs> We do see uh, icy wind on flutter main, presumably speed booster. I think we probably saw a speed booster on stream. Um, and yeah, speed. We saw, and of course, there's the uh, there's the uh, the ivy cudgel from ogre pond, which can also hit uh, hit landers pretty hard. And so there's a couple of ways speed booster flutter again. We talked about this in the uh, the episode um, last week, I think, where we covered beast coast results because that was everywhere in beast coast. I think mm -hmm. five of the top eight flutter mains had had icy wind there, and so uh, yeah. that that was another way where that was another adaptation with booster energy to deal with the uh the rise of scarf lando so i don't know mm -hmm. if i agree that this this version of the team where you have the um the flutter main and the king gambit is is especially weak to landorus or at least more so than it is weak to uh flutter main but um mm -hmm. but yeah i think that you know uh I, i'm interested to see how people continue to develop on this core because i think this core is just these are all the good mods right these are <laughs> these are the these are probably the five best mods in the format and then i know luca you're gonna hate me for saying this king gambit's there too <laughs> uh yeah obviously yeah, yeah. <laughs> not no slouch in its own right but you know you'd be hard pressed to say that ogre pawn iron hands landorus and fluttermane are not the the four best pokemon in the format oh landorus is mm -hmm. definitely the best pokemon in the format like i can't even argue with that one like he's he's so broken <laughs> so broken he's so um, so broken. but like so yeah. long as landorus is broken all i'll say is gamut is broken dude the thing about lando that like i know but like also still sometimes like tricks me is mm -hmm. uh just kind of like doing the mental math on terror blast because like sometimes you think all right landorus now gets access to a 80 base power flying move but it is like super boosted because of you know tearing into your own type it was the same way that terra flying dragonite worked back in the day where it's just like deceptively stronger than it is um you know you just you have to give extra respect to that terror blast yeah yeah um not quite and there are great. no pokemon that resist flying there's just not you, you can't resist flying except king gambit <laughs> <laughs> Like there's um, no, and like, you know, anything that does is weak to ground. Yeah, well, that's so. that's what my Terra Electric Landers is for. Oh, true. Wait a minute. <laughs> you it's can to win the, the mirror because when yeah. they Terra flying, <laughs> <laughs> that did come up once. It came up once, even though I still almost lost because I Terra Electric. Then I was weak to ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, I, I do want to give a quick shout to sixth place, uh, uh, Junzi Zhu. I'm not sure if I said that right, but um, for using Gastrodon, uh, we do got a slug here. Other than that, um, just a lot of similar offense options to some of the other teams we've been seeing with uh, CB Fairy Arcanine and Specs Flutter and Ogre Pond running substitute. Um, and then let's see, Riley's team using Dragonite. Um, I honestly, is that the best finishing natural dragon? Um, I think it is. There's like a decent number of Terra Dragons, but I was saying that so, I thought Dragon types might see a bit of a resurgence last week, mm -hmm. and I mean, one in top eight's not bad, uh, considering. Mm -hmm. like, oh, it's a salt vested. I did not realize that. It was a yeah, was... choice plan by cooking it, but... I was yeah, expected was to see more uh, Roaring Moon, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Roaring Moon is terribly down there. I actually did just yeah. look that one up before I said it. There are five total in the top 128, and most of them wow. are in the top 128. Uh, so, oh, not great showing for the moon. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Especially with how common uh, people running variants of Jude's team is um, to just see yeah. no yeah, no roaring moon. Wow. Brutal I mean, for that Pokemon. Waterman's still big. Lando is obviously pretty decent to just intimidate roaring moon. If, if they don't tear a U turn, does like 70% to it. Uh, and like, and I think, and also because considering King Gamma also still had pretty high usage, King Gamma just straight up walls roaring moon as well. Uh, so like it can just doesn't care about it's it can go up to plus two with its uh, uh, D dances and it still doesn't even do half of its health like yeah. it, it it's it's just not in a even in, despite the knock knockoff buff it's just not in a good spot in the meta I think despite all the grass types it just a lot of other mods that just go really good into it. Mm -hmm. so, what did Giovanni do? Giovanni, okay, this is just a pretty standard. Dance. It wasn't like he yeah. did anything crazy with it. He just I guess had a better team, played better. Um, I will say mm -hmm. a lot of the Roaring Moons that did well, or a lot of the Roaring Moons on this list, at least we see the, the next two in uh, Preston and Justin, um, both are using it with Weezing. 
which was really hyped up. I saw a lot of uh, content creators talking that up. Um, obviously, Weezing is a fan favorite. Um, I know Justin was hyping it up. He was doing really well on Ladder with it. And so I fully mm-hmm. expected this to do well. But um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I feel like Roaring Moon is too good a Pokemon to not see play. I am mm-hmm. curious if... Uh, if people move away from Weezing and they start using it on more conventional cores, like what Giovanni did, if it's going to, um, if it's going to do better, if it's, you know, is not a, this is a Roaring Moon team. This is a team yeah. that can fit a Roaring Moon on it because it's a good Pokemon. I will yeah. say I, Weezing still does look uh, decently strong into the, um, the very physical meta. Like Riley's team is a very good example. There's like, Will-O-Wisp into the five physical attackers. Oh, wait, there's one that's immune to fire, but it's weak to poison. So you got mm-hmm. some things going for you with that Pokemon. We'll see if anybody else is able to uh, to pull it off, though, because I do think it's a bit hard. Um, yeah, I tested it a bunch because it was my backup team for Peoria. I had it just because like, I just didn't feel good bringing it. But it just because a lot of times Weezing just feels like it just sits there or you're just protecting it and trying to play around stuff feels like whenever you swap it out or it dies, things should just fall apart pretty quickly. And it feels like pretty read heavy for the most part. So it's just, it wasn't something I felt super confident in. I had a similar core to Justin Burns, actually. Mm-hmm. I feel like it just demands a lot of your attention without enough payoff. You know, you kind of have to keep it on the field, but it, so that kind of disables your pivoting a lot of times, which I don't think is a good thing at a... I think it's just I think it's better to go probably around like a route Giovanni did just pair it with good solid mons that can pivot around and have good typing just pair it with Roaring Moon instead. Mm-hmm. Um, last in the topic that I do want to give a quick mention to is Leonard. Um, Leonard had the Blood Moon as well, so we do actually see two of the top eight for it. Pretty decent showing, and uh, the Dust Flops. Um, Dust Flops with. Brick Break is the only offensive moon to go in on uh, weakness policy Blood Moon. Um, I think this is the one that doesn't really care as much about uh, Goldengo or King Gambit resisting its moves. I think this one's clicking Terra Normal at plus two, and it's just probably shredding anything. Uh, wow. I, I was talking to Leonard because we were like we faced each other. Then afterwards, we were just kind of like nerding out about how cool Blood Moon was. And both of us played James, and both of us were like, this is matchup is horrendous. Just because it's really <laughs> oh, hard no. to get through. It was really hard to get through uh, Water Pond and uh, Goldango with his other support that he had had. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, because it had followed me, so we could redirect his um, weakness policy activation for him. And yeah. you know, it was hard for him to break through um, Trick Room with that. So yeah. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> Leonard also did the the cool thing where you uh, drop Wild Charge on Iron Hands for Volt Switch. Uh, still does have Heavy Slam. Mm-hmm. Um, and then other than that, uh, no other like major notable things. However, I just want to give a quick mention. Uh, while Justin Knox here in the call didn't end up doing it, I do think that Ogre Pond with Follow Me is just a nice inclusion on Trick Room. Obviously, you had Clefairy and didn't really need that. Um, yeah. option, but I think Ogre Pond, despite its uh, you know, 110 speed stat, is a very good Pokemon for Trick Room teams because, um, mm-hmm. it unlike a Moongus, uh, where you know you could like Rage Powder Trick Room, then you oftentimes end up with an Amoongus on the field, sometimes taunted because you know that's what you're redirecting. Ogre mm-hmm. Pond, if it redirects a taunt or an attack and it doesn't end up getting KO'd for one of your sweepers to come in, can just kind of become the sweeper. It's like, all right, well, I guess I'm doing damage now, and mm-hmm. so I like that about Ogre Pond. Just a yeah. great addition to the game. I think, I mean, again, I don't want to speak too soon before we have more tournaments under our belt, but I feel like Ogre Pond is one of the, like, cooler top-tier Pokemon that we've seen because it just does, like, different things. I think it's better than the... Urshifu. Anything is, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's just being it has, like, the number one usage combined, you know, with all of its forms, I think it's just because it's, like, when, when, when you have four... Di- it, they're basically four different mods with four different typings, and... They have, like, multiple ways to run. You can run, obviously, we saw Swords Dance, Grassy Glide, Hair to Rillaboom. We saw a bunch of Follow Me support ones. We, like, you, you can run it in so many different ways and with the different typings it has to offer. Like, it's not just Ogre Pond. There's, like, 15 different ways that, like, a Rukakavana can fit on your team. I'm yeah. like, I think, like, we're just going to keep seeing different ways to use it. It can fit on uh, just about any archetype, slow or fast. So, um, or in between. Good Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. Um, I also, for what it's worth, like that they looked at Regulation D, said, "Oh wow, Urshifu is everywhere." I know they did this way before Regulation D even existed, but 
looked at mm-hmm. looked at how dominant Urshifu was and said, what if we make the perfect counter to Water Urshifu <laughs> and we put it in the DLC so you have to buy it. Um, <laughs> and it still finishes one and two, and Urshifu still finishes the top two spots. So, <laughs> not that great of a yeah. counter. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess. Um, Plus combat still does like 80% to it. Yeah, it does hurt. Like, yeah, it, it does, does hurt. But then you just horn leech it all back. It's chill. Mm-hmm. It's fine. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Paul, I'm sorry. I'm skipping your team. We've talked about enough of that stuff. Um, you had focus energy. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Peter. Uh, to talk about the Staraptor Trick Room team. So I'm going to pull that Yeah, one. the request was from me. Um, I know it was from one of the viewers and Twitches, but it's also from me. Peter's, Peter's team is hype. Um, I, I bought his team uh, in Swiss. I like it was, horrifying it was hard yeah this uh this looks so scary um it, it does not look good uh as a trick room fan myself i'm just like that can't work but mm-hmm. sure enough i after i said this after day one i think mm-hmm. it was i think peter went seven and two in day one and nearly made it to cut with a i think a four and one record um yeah he won 11 and three I, I, I think i was just yeah. lost <laughs> sheesh yeah I mean, sure enough, I think one thing that Peter is doing right on a Trick Room team um, is, uh, I mean, I think Final Gambit Star After is one way to do it right, which is to, you know, get the most out of your Trick Room turns by making it happen right away. I don't know how often you're able to pull that off or not, but this is actually something similar to what uh, Luca was talking about with Urshifu on Tailwind. Uh, running Urshifu on Trick Room is another way to make sure that people aren't wasting your time with protects, wasting your turns. You know, yeah. if you are relying on a speed control move like Tailwind or Trick Room, um, yeah, you you cannot just let protect the most common move in VGC stall all your momentum. And mm-hmm. so um, running Urshifu Dark is a really cool uh, idea. I, we've seen it on some of the other Trick Room teams in Regulation D that people were trying. I know like that uh, Lilypad uh, chef group was doing something similar. Um, but I just I do think Urshifu is the the right idea for a trick room team. Yeah, I think you can't go wrong with just putting Sash Urshifu probably dark because you have Torkoal on trick room just because like it, 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 like you get it out on like the last turn of trick room and like they try to protect through it and just like just KO them instead. Yep. Yeah. And it's another Pokemon that like doesn't hate being out of trick room. You know, it's got Sucker Punch. Uh, it's yeah. got a decent speed tier. So if you know it finds itself in the right position against a slower Pokemon like a like a Heatran or something, then it can do something even though the Trick Room is uh, expired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, otherwise, you know, the, the the ideas here are relatively clear. Setting Trick Room with uh, Giraffe or Screamtail, Staraptor to try to, you know, help that go off with a final Gambit, uh, and then sweeping with Ursaluna or Torkoal, or I guess a bit of Urshifu itself. Mm. Um, and yeah, the, I mean, that's just a very cool team. Yeah. This was one of the better stream sets we saw. I think they, they played against uh, Lukamir on stream, I think. Um, uh, at least in day one. Day one, uh, it felt like every single stream set was a, was a stomp. It was, it was not, not fun Thanks. to watch. Uh, <laughs> but this was uh, one of the cooler sets. Uh, and mm-hmm. so, yeah, I mean, the Staraptor looked really good. I will say that. Because uh, Intimidating and then you turning into Ursaluna was very cool. And then on top of that, you always have the final Gambit pressure. Uh, mm. And so I I thought that interaction is really cool. Screamtail being used as a trick room setter is always really cool. I think Jimmy Boyt was on that at some point, um, and no one else really like really did that. I think Jimmy Boyt had a team with that in series two or something. Uh, but yeah, no one is using Screamtail as like a hard trick room enabler, despite having the toolkit to do literally whatever it wants. And so it is cool to see that as well. Um, I I don't know. It's hard to evaluate the sort of teams because like it's, I'm sure that they that Peter had very um, specific lines when you're playing this sort of team and uh it's not it, it's it's very it's not a very um standard team right so it's harder to evaluate but it, it's got a lot of really cool pieces and i think the standout from this weekend is hard trick room given that you know it's got three of the top 10 slots um it is uh it is really cool to see hard trick room make a resurgence and i'm curious if that is going to continue it didn't didn't have a super high representation in day two but the players who brought it to day two uh, all did very well with it. So, mm. my, my biggest takeaway is Fergaraf is actually way underrated. It was probably the MVP in my team, especially Nasty Ply. It was, it was easily the MVP of the run for the most part. That's super good. He got 8, 16, and then, yeah, actually no appearances in top 32, all the way down to uh, 64 for that. Uh, though that is a day two top 64. 
from mm-hmm. Everett Falloon. Uh, and then a lot of uh, a lot of giraffes died in day one. Just went and checked Codex Mortis. Fucking priority is so good, but you gotta give it something else to do, which is why I got plot. You can have run helping hand, which is okay. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the plot variant is way more threatening to a lot of teams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think plot's the best one. Like in prison trick room just feels so like You just you sit there. I didn't like it. Yeah. It's like it. if you bring it just to block priority, then you can do psychic and you can do like fifteen percent damage. Cool. Great. That's why <laughs> yeah. you gotta give it something else to do. That's why you got a nasty just... slot, so you can do thirty percent damage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Now we're cooking. Hold on. I've got a um, this one too. Oh no. <laughs> oh yeah, I did see. <laughs> Coming, coming, coming yeah. to Twitter near you. I feel uh, attacked. I feel yeah, attacked. I was gonna say I can't post this today because Justin's gonna think it's about him. <laughs> I have to wait a couple of weeks and then I'll post it. <laughs> hey, Okie dokie is an offensive core. Okay, it is. It is poison. It is fighting. Yeah, it's like <laughs> wicked blow, and that's like it. It's great. Yeah. And for I think that you know you're you're doing it with nasty ball, which I think makes it um, which I I think makes it a totally different Pokemon. Um, whereas uh, yeah, the, that's way more threatening. I'm thinking about like. How it was used on like Michael Derbesti's team obviously did really well for him too, um, but that was just like, hey, I don't have a defensive backbone and I'm weak to sucker punch. <laughs> Please hope this gets me there. <laughs> and it did. You got a lot of I, I, lot of weight to carry, giraffe. Yeah. Hope you can yeah. hope you can handle that. Uh, doesn't have wide shoulders, but it's got a long neck. Um, <laughs> so uh, Parker, I want to mention really quick has a uh, annihilate. Uh, we see almost two in the top sixteen. Noah. Uh, bubbled out um, and got 17. I played Noah in my last round, uh, so that team was actually pretty wild. If you can pull it up, um, it uh, was. Oh, it's got the di- oh yes, oh. dice rock blast. Let's go. Yeah, it, was, it was dice. It was dice rock blast with uh, annihilate for beat up. Is it is? Uh, I think his ape was like, or his arcane was near max speed or something. Is it outsped? Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a fast arcane to attack his annihilate. And then I got, like, game one, I broke screens and did pretty well. I kind of cleaned through there. Game two, he got me really bad. He got, he let RK9 annihilate um, and, like, rage fisted up and just swept my entire team. And Giraffe just kind of sat there while all its friends died. <laughs> and then he went to Gujra uh, round three. I was able to one shot it with Earth Power with uh, Blood Moon. Uh, mm. But yeah, that was pretty much oh, the Oh, no, side. you're not supposed that? to be able to one shot Gujra with a special attack. That's messed up. <laughs> life, no, I'm serious. Life Orb uh, Luna is absolutely the play. If you're not running Life Orb or running like, or like a uh, third spray, you're throwing. It's so good. But yeah, I agree. Life Orb is definitely the correct call on that guy. Yeah. Or we uh, but yeah. yeah, it was, it was a really fun set. I'm trying to wonder if uh, Ape is good right now. You know, there's a lot of Intimidate from Landorus. Probably it's not. not I don't the, know. It's I a know. different deterrent, but I don't know. I think it's a fine Pokemon, but it requires a lot of work. Um, it's, it was good on this team because it's kind of like a matchup check if you have ways to deal with it or not and it's mm-hmm. also like a good adaptation like oh i faked you out with screens this time now i'm gonna lead beat up and if you don't lead follow me you just lose so it's yeah. a good check for that so mm-hmm. i will say it was the scariest team i fought in day one because i saw this team was like oh i have four physical attackers and like one real special attacker i was like oh okay <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I basically got to kill everything that wasn't the Gujra first and then deal with the Gujra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, at least you can usually 2v1 this Pokemon um, yeah. if you can take care of all of his friends. Yeah. Um, and That's basically how I had to. <laughs> one, one thing I will say is that uh, Annihilate always had the Fluttermane problem, right? Especially it had to go Terra Water a lot. It went Terra Water in Reg C. Um, and it's still like, then it was really just like, did not want to take a Moonblast, did not want to take those powerful attacks. Fluttermane is now at 50% usage, right? And the highest usage Pokemon is Landorus in day two. Uh, and so one, it's obviously very good into Landorus with Defiance. And then two, uh, if you're if half the time you're facing teams without Fluttermane, you're allowed to say, I'm bringing this Mon half the time. Um, and I have, you know, five other Mons that uh, form two other cohesive modes for the other half the games. Um, like that's an okay thing to do, uh, especially since you always have it as a mix up, even into teams that have Fluttermane. Um, and so that's not an annihilate specific comment, but I remember saying that on stream about a different Pokemon, and I forget which one it is. And I think that's another, uh, a newer way to team build that is valid once again, just because Fluttermane has gone from seventy percent usage to fifty percent usage. Hmm. Which I mean, it's still on over half of teams, but like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Carson's team. I don't want to talk about any of the other Pokemon, so don't derail the conversation, y'all. It's just about the bug. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, Illumai's pretty funny. Um, noteworthy, the things that I can do is it's kind of like Whimsicott. If you guys remember that Pokemon, I, I still, you know, l like to think about. I don't like to think about that Pokemon. Actually, man, looking uh, at Illumai's, it is like Whimsicott if it like shaved its hair. <laughs> anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> um, kind of like two months. What's that? We'll be thinking about Whimsicott in like two months when it comes out. Yeah, we will. We will. I forgot. That's like, honestly, a pretty big, uh, Edition coming back. Beat um, up Tailwind and Nileape. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a, it's gonna be a Nileape's new best friend. It'll be pretty funny. Uh, um. But yeah, this thing has fake tears, which Whimsicott does. Encore, which Whimsicott does. Um. It's on a bug typing, which is like surprisingly okay. Into basically just like Iron Hands. If you can force Iron Hands to be clicking Wild Charge, at least that's eating away into its health and it's not getting it back. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, it might have, like, another resistance or two. I can't even remember what the bug type resists right now. Grass. Um, ground. Grass is a big one. Uh, grass, grass and ground. Those ground. are the two big ones. Um, fighting, right? Or does it... Fighting, no, yeah, yeah. That's ground. what I was talking about when I was talking about Iron Hands. And so, yeah, another thing that was pointed out to me is that uh, Infestation, is, which is a trapping move, is really cool with Encore. Um, if you happen to get an opponent stuck in... Um, you can put them into yeah. the wrong move. It might allow you to make a defensive switch on something that is a bit more offensively geared, um, you know, and so that I think that can be uh, a pretty nasty combo. And I, I don't think this is going to be a very common Pokemon as the format goes on, but it's a decently cool niche pick. Mm -hmm. We saw a couple people use Illumise. Uh, I think that they built it together. Carson and Marcus, I think, were using it, and they were yeah. the two Marcus people who used it. got points with it. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's a cool team that they built together, uh, and mm. yeah, cool, cool concept. Uh, mm -hmm. but I think that's a, most of the main things I want to mention. We're going to start getting down here into the lower um, placements here. You know, definitely uh, some solid runs into day two, but not quite making it all the way to the top. Dondozo, mm -hmm. one appearance in top 32, and I think that's its highest. Um, I had I another appearance out, in... I tested out you. Jared's team. Um, because I, I thought that the, the hail stuff was very cool. I saw the team that was going, making the rounds. We saw a couple people make day two with it. I think Abdul made day two with it. Um, that was like the, the one that had been around, but, um, but this team, I tested it. I ran into a torn with, um, with a weather move and I was just like, oh, you have, you cannot beat the torn weather. You're not icicle. You're not any, any damaging move on backs. So you're ice shard. You're never killing this torn. <laughs> and so I dropped it, but I, then, I, oh, and then, and then I went through Jared's run. Um, for all the people who got points, and I was like, okay, who did he play? Like, is there anything I can, like, look for? And I found out he faced not a single person who got championship points with Tornadus um, throughout day one or day two. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that makes sense. So, um, so I'm the biggest, like, screens. Like, I, I will play screens whenever it is good. And it tells you something that I'm not playing screens. Because I think Hale is just, like, I think it's forever mid. I think you'll get maybe an okay day two showing at best. But I feel like better players like Torin. There's just so much that as it goes against it, I just don't really see it ever like winning a tournament or even like, I don't know about top eight even really, honestly. Yeah, um, that, that's, yeah. I mean, also when obviously rain dance torn, like I fought, I fought one in Swiss and I just rain danced and it was just kind of over from there. And also I think in game two, I just terra ferried my flutter, outsped it, and one shot it. Which like, if Nine Tails was good when it was like the third fastest Pokemon in the format in like 2017, but when it's slower than most of the format and gets one shot by it uh before you can set up screens it's not yeah it's kind of bad <laughs> i don't think that's when, when all, think when all fine, points Pokemon. have like taunt or rainy dance it's just it's not going to work out great <laughs> mm -hmm. i think the main appeal of it is that uh especially if the format becomes more physically defensive or physically uh, offensive then getting the defense boost and getting another mom with the defense boost can be very powerful um and so that was what drew to me was like, you know, the, the, the pretty straightforward logic of, oh, the format's more physically oriented. Um, I can try to do like Nine Tails Max Caliber stuff into more physical teams and then defensive teams, uh, special defensive teams, are uh, teams that have the focus on Chi Fluttermain, uh, which is the main special core, are going to really struggle with the combination of AV Heatran plus Ogre Pond. But then, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, at least the way that this team is built, I think it's a. I think these four was a, were a very interesting idea that I was in, uh, excited to try out, but at least the way this team is built, I just could not find a way to beat um, to weather using weather move torn. Um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I think this this core is very cool, and I, I do want to see people keep uh, trying out different ways to to use Nine Tails backs because that is one of the cooler things to come out of the DLC, despite the fact that 
uh bax really didn't get anything in the dlc it got a scale shot as an option see it not using it um but nine tails is enough of a buff that it's kind of back in the metagame i mean high horsepower is a pretty good buff <laughs> it is nice yeah definitely definitely uh, i could see that being uh, a pick on i don't know maybe an assault vest you don't get to run dice though i like the dice yeah pretty cool. um but leftovers is also it, cool you're just recovering so much mm -hmm. yeah i think it's very cool um the last team i think we should give a mention to is a team down at 36 just because i don't think andy is playing the same format we are um and i have questions uh, <laughs> I, I there was mul i heard there was more than one i heard there was more than one of these teams going around <laughs> Oh, did they get points? I think the easiest way to look that up would be slow, bro. Uh, no, I think only only this one. Um, and this was but the, anyway. Um, this was like top three in res among seven twos. This was eight, the seven one going into the last round of Swiss had like crazy res, um, and then they you know didn't do too hot day two. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Nobody, I, nobody tell Luca that there is a way to make your black glasses tear a dark king gambit hit harder, and it's called <laughs> Life Orb. <laughs> this, okay. this guy said that's cool and all, but that's not enough. Um, I, mean, I love it. You really need Iron Head to hit Flutter Main harder. I mean, sure. <laughs> but for what it's worth, right? Flutter Main has such great defense. <laughs> king gambit, king gambit being what? What was in usage? Top ten in usage, roughly at this tournament. Yeah. Um, like, tough time, yeah. now all of a sudden if people start EVing for black glasses because that is you know uh 17 out of 23 used it maybe mm. you start uh maybe you start running life orb to, to pick up those people who calc for king gambit you know yeah uh, just just like the ice cold crash ice spinner debate back in the back in the day or, um man back in the day though just like this team does look like it's from like 20 20 true. i don't know yeah 2015? Salmon. Right, yeah, maybe 15 is the, oh. the best one. If this yeah. was a Bishar, a Mega Pass, maybe. You, you Buttermane's a Gengar. A know. Gengar, yeah. yeah. Ogre Pond is some other stupid fast rock. I don't think we had a fast rock. Just, uh, I don't know. Just replace any any rock type you want with a T-Tar. Let's just say T-Tar. Great, Dilly. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, this team is... It's just crazy. Um, so funny. Uh, props for making it this far with something that just looks so dated and not in like a, oh, this is from a couple formats ago. This does look like years old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. I, 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 people can figure out if there was Roaring Moon or Salamence on the team. People just like... <laughs> that's got to be a team sheet error. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah, I mean, waiting for the choice. Somebody said waiting for choice band king gambit. That's true. <laughs> Maybe one day. You only need um, so. <laughs> I mean, then if we start, there is a way to get more strong uh, than choice band. There, the next step is for uh, Supreme Overlord for the Supreme Overlord to finally come out. <laughs> uh, like if you could just fuse define and Supreme Overlord, I'd be I'd be okay with that. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think that's mostly it for uh, Peoria. Uh, we talked quite a lot um, about it, and so hopefully we didn't miss anything. If there's people in the chat that want to mention anything that we didn't get to, um, I, I heard an um, so somebody still got something to say about yeah, Peoria. Yeah, yeah, it's me. So first off, <laughs> want to shout out my boy K-Swast for, for making day two, even though they didn't do too hot in day two with uh, with Sci Spam Azu. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I want to shout out Han, uh, who's been uh, another uh, Purdue student who's been you know try, gr grinding this game and going to so many events and you know finally had her break is that a rinka that is, that is rinka yeah, yeah it's rinka right um yeah, so rinka. shout out to her as well for for making a day two in this tournament um those are the two people i wanted to shout out along with carson who you know you know we talked about mm -hmm. already uh so mm. yeah and then like i said i did i did, did point it out um the uh the more traditional hail team that you see dylan got top 32 with and then i think abdul was down here um these six i've seen a bunch so that was the hail team i was referencing earlier but those are the um those are the teams I especially wanted to talk about that made day two. There's some cool teams that didn't make day two, um, but <laughs> we don't really have time to go yeah, over the 128 teams. <laughs> yeah, uh, there was uh, three Weezings, if you count both forms, by the way, uh, Standard Tangerine. Um, mm -hmm. but none uh, none made it past uh, day two. I think none made it into the second day. So I wonder which Weezing is better. I want to say the Fairy one, because it was just as dark, but I don't know which would be better in the format. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
it, it gains a steel weakness and a dark resistance. Those are the main things. And then uh, Weezing did get access to play rough uh, with the with it coming back. So if you want to have that as a offensive option, that is pretty nice. Yeah, no, I think yeah, that, that's kind of funny. I didn't know it got play rough. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's move on. To play roughing with. What's up? What? What is it play roughing with? Like, I mean, that doesn't have arms or what is that? What's it? Uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to do. Oh. If it just hits you with its body, it pipes. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk more about the shape of wheezing. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Sacramento. Uh, the upcoming regional this weekend. Um, I, I, just checking. I don't know. You guys are from different side of the the continent, but uh, are anybody here going? No. <laughs> Justin? I am not. No, I, I only I... got so much PTO, and it's going towards my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> that, that maybe is a good reason. Yeah, um, I, I know Adi's not going, so uh, I think it's just going to be me. So um, I'll be, you know, providing the live coverage going to be, you know... Uh, mm. Definitely streaming when the stream goes down, you know, of course. Uh, <laughs> no. We'll see. You know, uh, this this past weekend, I did a stream after day one where I uh, watched all the matches. True. Um, I've got, I've actually got a, a big Yu-Gi-Oh tournament near me, so I'm going to be busy during Saturday. So we'll see if I have the energy when I get back home, if I can. Um... Well, I wasn't talking about doing that. I was just, no, but I'm <laughs> I was just... joking that I was going to record it, like, while I was there. I, I will say, um... uh, if y'all, if y'all liked what we did with um, rewatching Peoria and you want us to do Sacramento, uh, let us know. Alex is obviously a little busy, but um, I will I will try to rewatch the sets. That was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, keep keep a, keep a lookout for that on Saturday or maybe Sunday morning if I'm exhausted or something. Um, I, I do want to do that. And then hopefully we can do it for day two because I think the day two sets are always higher quality. Um, you just you know, you know the players are doing well. You know the players are um, uh, at least 7-2 or better, and obviously top cut is always very, very hype. So I might try to do it for that too. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Sacramento. Uh, Alex is going. Alex, how many people are signed up for Sacramento? Uh, oh, I did check that earlier today. It was like 458, which was one of the reasons that we kept it at a rating of three out of five, um, as opposed to making it sound maybe higher than Peoria. I did see a number of strong players make their way out to Peoria, even though apparently nobody remembered that it's like three hours from the nearest airport. Yeah. Um, they they still fought to make their way there. Uh, there was prize money on the line. Um, and so, yeah, because this one was capped at a smaller number, we're going to keep it as a three out of five as well. Was I would have, yeah, I would have liked... Capped? I th I'm pretty sure it capped. I thought, well, I thought this was one to find out. If you already did, yeah. No, uh, I think no, you can still sign up. Sacramento. Yeah, you can still sign up. You can still up. sign up for... Okay, never mind. This one did not cap. Then why, are people, why aren't people going to this one? I don't know. Does Sacramento suck? I'm not from around here. Sacramento um, is not the easiest place to get to, but it is like I think an hour, an hour and a half outside of uh, outside of San Francisco, and so it's not that bad. If you're willing to fly to Chicago and drive three hours, surely you're willing to fly to Sac uh, to San Francisco and drive an hour, right? Like, but mm -hmm. um, and then Sacramento's airport is significantly bigger than Peoria's, does have a decent number of flights, um, so it's certainly not Fresno levels of bad for NorCal regionals but also nowhere near as convenient as like the old San Jose regionals were to, to get to. Yeah. I'm going to pull up a map because apparently no one knows where Sacramento is. <laughs> I don't. Mm, I do know it's NorCal. I had to ask. It's because uh, they, they differentiate down there. Um, they, they basically It's basically two different states. They're like, I don't know, it's just a big state and there's a lot of people. Um... But Huddy actually has a map up. Why I, I, are we doing this? You, you, you did ask me in chat, wait, Sacramento is a NorCal regional. <laughs> so I felt the need to pull it up so people knew where it was. And also compare it to Fresno, which is like really out in the middle of nowhere where we all went to. Not we all. I think it was just me from this group who <laughs> went there last year. Um, but, but yeah, pretty close to San Francisco, San Jose. So not unreasonable to get to if you are trying to, if you're still trying to make plans. I mean, if you, if you, really were inspired by Peoria or you found the, the, the call today, signups are still open and maybe you can find mm -hmm. a ride from, from one of the bigger airports nearby. Yep. Um, so that's about it for things to mention about size and stuff. Uh, we can talk a bit about the, uh, the history. Um, wait, does this actually have the casters here on the victory road page? Oh, I didn't know that it's, 
Hey, it. Just when did they tweet. announce that? I, right? I don't know. And maybe unless this is like old or something. But is uh, is Jake uh, coming back? I, no, it's got Len in there and Jake. That's gonna be cool. That's that's gonna I'm be excited. Fun. Um, but I just get Jake back on the desk. Uh, maybe they announced it like well in advance. Who knows? Anyway, um, we got the casters and um, yeah, let's talk about the um, the history of this one. I I decided to put them in chronological order this time instead of reverse chronological order so we can start in the past and talk about the ones that nobody's ever heard of and then get to the more recent okay. ones that people will remember so the problem um, is i gave all my norcal stories last time we reca uh, previewed fresno so i don't want to repeat my stories uh, <laughs> i also don't want you to repeat your stories um so uh, <laughs> um so we do have uh starting out yeah, we yeah i guess we were like 2017 weeks. season i guess this is when we normally start out there were regionals before that but i don't know if limitless covers them they're a little harder to find um, but 2017, this was the, I think the first regional of the year. It was right after EUIC, which is the first event of, um, of 20, this 2017 format. Uh, and it, I mean, Gavin won with Hard Trick Room. Gavin, of course, the uh, the king of California. He would go on to win SoCal regionals this year as well. Uh, and um, and yeah, he won both of those with Hard Trick Room. So maybe maybe a trend after Hard Trick Room did well uh, at at Peoria, second place. And this is where, you know, one of the cooler teams that uh, looks pretty standard, but Tapu Fini was nowhere to be seen at EUIC. And I know she was the first person to figure out that, hey, Tapu Fini is like a good Pokemon. Um, mm. And again, you can you can see Top 16 is the only Tapu Fini there that you can't imagine that, uh, knowing how 2017 turned out uh, later on and how, you know, Pokemon in general has turned out since then and how big an impact Tapu Fini has had. Um, and so those were the, the two big uh, takeaways from this event. But yeah, two... Um, yeah. Inosh obviously not, I guess not obviously not attending, but he is, he is not attending. He is currently not in the United States right now. Um, and, uh, and Gavin of course is attending cause he is the, the King of California. <laughs> uh, yeah. Looking at other names here, uh, Zeng was not listed in the commentary. Uh, so maybe, maybe, uh, Aaron will be competing. Um, Alberto very likely to be competing. I, I would put a 99% chance on that. Um, and uh, for the rest of these, I cannot say I'm certain. So let's uh, move on to the next um, next one we have here, mm -hmm. the uh, San Jose from uh, 2017, 2017 year, but the 2018 format. Yeah, that's great. That's crazy. And there's and there's wait, five this, uh... Tapu Finis in top eight, six wait, Tapu no, this Finis is not in top. The 2018 format. I, I this, is the 2017 this is the 2017 format, 18. but it is the 20. Yep. This was actually um, my. I t I have a couple stories about this one. I um I lost my winning at this regional. Um, to the biggest brain fart I've had in my VGC career ever. Uh, and so uh, Jira bubbled in because I was the X1 that didn't actually go X1 and went X2 um, in the last round. And so, uh, and he won the regional and he was playing as an APAC player despite living in, uh, going to school in California. And so uh, a lot of the APAC players were very upset because he was in the day two race. Uh, Emilio got second. Emilio, of course, is a NorCal player. Um, I think I heard he wasn't going, right? That's what no, said. No, Emilio should not be going. So uh, um, from what I've heard, so yeah, no, he probably isn't. And uh, I mean, you can see the the international flavor. Renee, one of the the best Latin players of the time, um, went and got top four. And Sam also from uh from Australia. I think this was like right after one of the internets, and so um he was on like he was like I'm gonna stay in California for a week on the way there. Gavin I think told the story about having to pick Sam up from the airport to drive to this regional, um, but uh. I will say that California is very accessible to um, a lot of international players. Uh, I I would not be surprised if a lot of players from LATAM came up to uh, to San Jose, to not San Jose to to Sacramento, um, just because flying from uh, Mexico or from Central America to California is relatively cheap compared to a lot of the United States, and um, the increased prize money makes it a lot more uh, valuable, right? We saw in Peoria, we saw um, was it Giovanni um, who came from mm -hmm. Bolivia. And did really well um and so again now all of a sudden it might be worthwhile to if you're very confident and if you're a player especially a player of renee's caliber and there are several of those in in latam uh it would not shock me to see uh them come and invade san jose either mm -hmm. um yeah i can't say uh i don't know if sam's gonna be at this one again so <laughs> uh for the rest of these names um I guess Mitchell's Davy uh, Mitchell Davies is in the chat. I don't know if uh, uh, oh he is missing Nola is go oh, yeah, is going. Is. Um, um, let's see, and then Patrick Smith. I feel like that guy's retired. 
He's Gotta he's be. a Smash Bros player now. I think I think he's right. Smash he's a Smash Bros player. Um, okay. So then moving on to Santa Clara, uh, or uh, a bit more recent. Twenty twenty nineteen, um, we got um, um, this regional uh, is hosted by uh, this regional was won by Ashton um, on Zerndon. Was this the Parish Zerndon team? It, yeah, is, I believe it's Parish. Also, uh, Luca, do you know if Ashton is going to Sacramento? Yeah. No, he told me this first event back will be LAIC. Oh. Okay, gotcha. I guess that's a different title he wants to defend. Is he, is he uh, defending not his LAIC recent. title? Is he, has he won the last LAIC? <laughs> no, 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 no. Was that James? No, James was the last one who won. Oh, yeah, James Yeah, was the I think one. so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but, I mean, I'll just be going with him because uh, mm -hmm. I'll go to LAIC for the first time, too. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Um, but, oh. so, Ashton, maybe not going to be... Um, you know, we, we do have one more regional after this one, so Ashton's not the defending champ, but mm -hmm. Ashton would have been a, a solid pick if he was uh, going to be in attendance. I think Justin Burns also not in attendance. Uh, Jeremy Rodriguez, also another one that I'm pretty sure is not going. No, he's not. Uh, uh, so, yeah, there's three whiffs right there. I Back to Renee. I don't think Renee's going either. I don't think Renee plays anymore. Yeah. Uh, I don't is, think... is there anybody from this top eight? Uh, I... Apparently, these players <laughs> I have think just all done. <laughs> Who's I give who a special end? shout out to. Hold on, we got to give a special shout out to Bingji though for having Empoleon here. Um, Empoleon was not as relevant as it could be today. It's still not very relevant today, but I promise you, it was less relevant then. Uh, so shout out. Raghav, Raghav asks if you skipped his. Wait, Raghav, did you win SoCal or NorCal? Um, yeah, Raghav, you did. You didn't win a NorCal one. Didn't did you, you win like Anaheim? Uh, or one of the, one of the southern. Uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> But um, I will say, uh, Empoleon, this is its only top cut, I think, ever at, at a VGC <laughs> regional. Um, I think you can click them on. And uh, yeah, this is its yeah. only cut that's ever been meant, uh, at least recorded on Limitless. This is a Pokemon that, you know, did get a buff. So maybe, maybe, just maybe. Empoleon is going to be back cutting a, a NorCal regional. You never know. As somebody who is attending Sacramento, I encourage you guys to use Empoleon. Yes, it seems like a very strong pick right now. Um, and uh, my team currently has no answers to Empoleon. So please do show up with your Empoleons. I, I will, um, I'll give you a piece of advice. There was an Empoleon in um, in top 128 of Peoria. I saw I saw one of them. Um, Yawn is the best move it gets. Yawn cycling I, uh, while it uh, while your opponent has an intimidate user which they always do is pretty cool. I clicked uh, the next link for Fresno and I forgot that that's like literally this year. I almost threw up because I saw a bunch of Fluttermane and I was like, oh man, this is not a historical event. This is. Uh. <laughs> um, yeah, this yeah. was this was a few months ago. Uh, the last regional, last last regional. There was a special event uh, in in North America of the uh 2023 season we saw emilio um have a, a dominant run um only lost to choppa i think uh the entire tournament so crazy crazy strong run uh defending his uh i guess defending his title but like um defending his, his home region i guess i'd say uh see gavin in second place again gavin always does well in the west coast uh we see uh zach i don't know did, did zach go to peoria did he go to pittsburgh no, he's going to Sacramento. He's going to Sacramento. Okay, I know he's, I know he's a West Coast player, okay. so it does make sense he'd be going to uh to uh Sacramento. But yeah, I guess traveling a little less. He went to like basically every event last year. Um, but with day two, you know, not really existing. Maybe uh maybe toning it down a little bit, but still, uh, surely you know uh, a force to be reckoned with on the West Coast. Riley, another player. He said he's off. kind of focusing on uh, IRL a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. What I talked to him last time. Mm -hmm. Um. And then uh, we got we got Riley coming off Pittsburgh Regional Championships, uh, and you know this was the first real big result I think he had back coming coming back to VGC. Uh, he might have had another mm -hmm. good run, but like you know this was like oh shit Riley's back, uh, and so, so you know, seeing him do well at Pittsburgh, do well. Our at, CP uh, leader, I believe, um, mm -hmm. with yeah. three hundred because of the top eight, first yeah. and top eight. I mean that's or, insane. <laughs> Yeah, so already qualified for Worlds, also CP leader right now. So, um, yeah, Riley no longer calls California home. I believe Riley was a West Coast player, oh, but now he lives in uh, – I think he lives in Florida now. Oh, um, really didn't know that. Yeah, so – He was my Riley. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> very 
<laughs> I was going to say, Riley, maybe going, because, I mean, maybe it's a trip home. Maybe it's easy. I but... think he's going, because I talked to him at the event. I think he is. I'm pretty sure he yeah. said. Because he said Not he was going to LAIC, and I said I think he's pretty sure he's going to Sacramento, too. All right. Adi, uh, since you are the host, you are last pick on Smart Money. So if anybody wants to steal Riley from Adi, it, it's open That's game. fine. That's fine. Um, <laughs> It was already on my mind. <laughs> that, no, no, by all means. I've got, I know I'm last, so I know I've got backups. Got, I got my Chapa, backups. Chapa's going as well, I believe. Is Chapa going? Oh, no, no. Chapa's not. No, Chapa's the next event is Toronto, I think. I think yeah, Chapa's, Chapa's, yeah. Been, Chapa's on the bench right now. Alberto's going. Uh, Alberto again. Um, Len, I don't think anybody should smart money Len. Uh, maybe I smart know. money for commentary if you want, but the <laughs> results for that have already been spoiled. Yeah. Um, and I think Kalen is a Texas player, so I don't know if he's going or not. He, you know, Texas means you can kind of go either way, but true hmm. um other notable ones that we could see in uh, attendance here um again another <laughs> another australian i don't know if uh we're gonna see any australians at this one but i guess i can't rule it out um mm -hmm. uh I, I mean genuinely yeah right like australia does not have an international they have like three regionals total um it's not i don't know what the like incentive really is unless you're really not confident that you can get your invite from locals and and your regionals, which I think most players who are willing to travel around the globe are probably capable of doing. Um, but it would not shock me to see some Australian players show up because they are that confident. Although I think I would have seen them at Peoria and they would have double dipped. <laughs> Peoria was not worth going to <laughs> for a long term distance, I'll say that. <laughs> <God. laughs> um, There's just so yeah, much I'm to do there. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, I love the barren, desolate, n n no man's land aspect of it. It was a great vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm looking at a bunch of the rest of the names that I cannot either confirm that they are going or not. But um, with that, though, let's go ahead and um, start our uh, smart money. I can't remember who I had first. It looks like it's Justin. Um, okay. So, uh, Justin... Who are you uh, picking for smart money? So, yes, uh, I got to shout out my uh, boy, Ally or Will Scully, for my smart money. Um, All right. He's, uh, he barely gets to do tournaments. The last tournament he did, he won the 450-man NATO tournament that had, like, Wolf and everyone else doing alts on it. Um, I've seen what he's cooking. It's pretty wild, and I think it's going to really possibly shake up the meta. So that's who I think that that's my kind of smart money to definitely at least get day two and get to see some good showing. So Okay. Um, good, good shot, good shot. It's always, I mean, that is the the first step is picking somebody you know is going. That's always the hardest part. <laughs> Luca, who do you who are you picking? Uh, I, I mean, I already knew before, and I was gonna pick Riley. Uh, I bought him in top eight, and he just played very, very well. Like his positioning was just so incredible. Uh, I actually only won game one because I got a rock slide punch into his Moongus, <laughs> which mm. uh, was, I got I got very lucky in that case. Uh, but like. It, like he brought it to a point where just like he he kept making every single right switch that he needed to make like it was just immaculate play like he already won a regional he got top eight like i not surprised at all if he makes another run riley is in top form right now um, great pick <laughs> um and i don't have to resort to my backup options because gavin's still on the board uh, so shout out Scott. Uh, Scott, I was gonna pick you if Gavin wasn't available, uh, but I'll take Gas and Michaels. Gak Gakvin Michaels. Um, I'm getting there. Yeah, Adi's just trying to leave Gavin on the board, and he said, "Oh, did you say Gakvin? <laughs> yeah, you could have Gakvin." <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry if I'm smart money cursing you, Gavin, but uh, your name appeared far too many times in the history, and uh, I believe this is uh, your time zone, and you do well when you're. Uh, you have good sleep. So <laughs> there is a Adi, what are you? There is a clip out there the of Gavin winning a premier challenge by hitting three fissures in a row. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, he hopefully he didn't wear out all of his good luck. <laughs> Adi, what do you got? I you know I I will say that Gavin was my backup. I did not think that he would last. Uh, I, either Riley or Gavin oh, would get that far, but um, I've got the. Uh, the other, uh, the other California tubber who I think has, uh, you know, a California regional championship and, and can win another one. I think, uh, I think Raghav, I think Raghav's going to take it. Um, you know, he, mm. he was just complaining that he wasn't on, on screen when, um, when we were talking about California regionals and, uh, for some reason, you know, 
I gen- genuinely surprised that he he has you know so many impressive regional performances and that none of them are in his uh, home region of NorCal. So I I'm picking Raghav. I think he uh, he breaks the curse and um, and gets through and yeah and does really well. All right. Well, let's see if Raghav can uh, can do it in, Nor- in NorCal. We've seen him do it in SoCal. So yeah. Uh, right. So that will be it for Sacramento. We'll, of course, be talking about it next week when we have the results. Um, and, yeah, let's uh, end it off with uh, the Calc is Right. Mm-hmm. So this is a mm-hmm. segment, for those who don't know, where uh, each each of us has a damage calc that we say out loud, and then the other three players have to pick a number. That number mm-hmm. is the number that we expect the, um, uh, the damage the Pokemon to do um, in terms of percentage damage. And then if that number is within the damage roll range, we get it right. If not, we get it wrong. Uh, and mm. so uh, I guess, uh, Luca, do you have a calc in mind? Um, yeah, I got one. Uh, if you were watching uh, the finals, you saw that this one happened. Uh, let's see, how much uh, we're going to do a uh, max attack adamant or Shifu's uh, surging strikes, you know, just max attack adamant, uh, Terra Water, in rain, how much does that do to a four HP Urshifu? <laughs> uh, wait, so Urshifu water? Yeah, so Urshifu yeah. water versus Urshifu water. How much does the max attack adamant, Terra water, rain boosted surging strikes do to the opposing four HP Urshifu? Which we don't got a boosting with, item, right? With not a boot without a boosting item. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, relevant because it was my only water switch in. And that was not a water switch in. I'm just going to give you a hint. It's not a water switch in in that case. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, I got to think of my number. Um... So one thing hmm. to note is that uh, multi-hit moves have very high ranges, and critical hits increase your range. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be a, a potentially like a 20-point range, I think. But <laughs> I, I, do, I do have a number. I've got a number. I have one, too. You locked in, Justin. All right. Uh, so yeah, Luca, you just call on someone. Um, sure. We'll go with Adi. I think this is a roll to kill. Um, so I'm picking a hundred. Hundred. <laughs> you said you said okay. in rain, right? In rain, Terra water. Terra water. Uh, okay. No boost. It was from a scarf or shifu. Yeah. No. I got. I'm. I'm. I'm throwing it down. We're saying a hundred. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm a little less confident that it gets all the way there because it's got a decent physical bulk. 92. All right. And you, Justin? I guess I was going to say like 110, 120 or so, I guess. 110? All right, 110. That's too much. <laughs> all, right. Um, all right, Adi, plug it in. Yeah, like a shit yeah. yes. <laughs> all right, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Adamant, Mystic Water, Terra Water, In the Rain. No, 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 not Mystic Water. No item. It's just no Water. Item. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah into opposing Urshifu Rapid Strike. It is doing 65 to 77. It did oh, the man. full it did the full 77 by the way after I looked at the number. <laughs> oh, oh word. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cuz I just my HP went to like 40. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. That I don't one's play just rain very often if you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I uh yeah, I definitely was feeling a bit this misled because I have not watched finals. Um I didn't have the time. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I think this I is gonna be back. way too much. You're you're not missing much, I'll be real with you. <laughs> yeah. I I thought I thought it was gonna do I thought hundred was the high roll. I thought like it was probably gonna do closer to ninety, but yeah, I was way off. I did not yeah. know my, my count yeah. for this. Our sheepish physical bulk is still really good, but it's just the fact that it did almost eighty percent to do a physically bulky resistance. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is pretty nice. Um, <laughs> not a switch in, like you said. Not a. It was my only water. It was the only one I could switch in that wouldn't die in that scenario. <laughs> less I than don't 100. Really less than 100 is, is better than nothing. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, Justin. yeah. Um, Justin, do you have one? Sure. Uh, so, Blood Moon. Uh, Life War, Blood Moon. Blood Moon. Mm-hmm. A helping hand into the average iron hands of like 12 HP, like 236 special defense. You were not any boosting Terra, so just no. Life or Blood Moon. No, just mm-hmm. Life Modest Blood Max Moon, or Blood something? Moon. Modest Max, yeah. Are you cool. Terra? There's no boosting no, Terra. Uh, I was, 
You, I'll so tear you, grass. So uh, are you are you Terra normal on the Blood Moon? No, no, it's Terra grass. Sorry. Grass, terra, terra oh, okay. Grass. Oh, okay. So no boosting Terra, just just straight up helping hand uh, life for Blood Moon. Into, Iron Into hands. four four or no? What is it? Four. It's like twelve, two? like two thirty six is like the average or something like that. Twelve two thirty six. Okay. Um. Hmm. The self of course. It, yeah, it's just, it's just the four HP max buff one, right? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Twelve two thirty six or four twelve two thirty six. Okay. We'll say four, twelve two thirty six. That's that's what. Yeah. It's it only. Okay, twelve two three. Um, it's the same thing. Okay, I think I got it. I got my number. I yeah. got a number. Uh, All right, let's go, Luca first. I think the roll range is like that. It's a roll to kill, and it's like ninety to like one hundred five. So, which number okay. in there do you want to pick? Oh, we'll like see. if you if that's what you think the range is, you would pick the middle. You know, I think, yeah, I pick somewhere like ninety five. Like let's let let's just say ninety five. Okay. All right, uh, Adi. I think that it is doing way less than that. I think it's this is a self vest, right? A self vest iron hands. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's doing like seventy three. Let's say. I think Adi's an idiot. <laughs> um, uh, but my number, I didn't feel as confident as Luca. I do think that Iron Hands is a die. So, mm -hmm. I think it's, I'm going 88 is my number. All right, let's see it. Life Orb, Blood Moon, into Iron Hands, Terra Grass Assault Fest, 12, 236. It is doing... With Helping Hand. Oh, with Helping, helping hand. hand. Oh, I totally missed that. Uh, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it is doing 77.4 to 91.7. So it's close to spot. I'm in there. Yeah. It's, pretty, pretty, it's, it's pretty, like, there is no safe switch into Helping Hand Blood Moon. That's what <laughs> I found out this weekend. Yep. That, that, that seems right. Earth, technically does, Earth yeah. Power does more technically, but it covers Terra. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. That is, that is pretty awesome. Uh, Alex, you that got one? Sense. Or should I go? Um, uh, let's go with you first. I gotta just think of one before I was blanking. Right. I got so we were talking about Satitan, and uh, so yeah. I haven't run this calc yet. I, I roughly know this calc from um, from the game that I played against it on ladder. Uh, so we got Satitan at plus six max attack, adamant, ice shard into unterrored water ogre pawn, uh, with 252 HP for defense, let's say. Mm hmm. I got my number. Is All right, Adi, can you repeat it one more time? I was thinking about my calc, and I've got my calc now, but I was not listening to yours. It Say is it again. Plus six attack, um, adamant, not sheer force. Um, not that I think sheer force matters, right? Because it's uh, ice no, shard. No, no, um, no, no. Uh, really thick, thick fat ice shard um, from plus six to Titan into water ogre pawn with 252 HP for defense. And so it didn't tear us, so it's just neutral. And it, it did not tear us, mm. so it's neutral. Okay. Oh, dang it, I just spoiled for my opponents that it's a neutral attack. Dang it, if they didn't know the type. Uh, 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 I think I got mine. Um, I, I, hmm. I guess. Dang. Um, okay, I, I got a number. I, I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Alex, you want to start? Yeah, uh, I, I believe it's the Titan. It's killing, and I feel like it's killing by a decent margin. <laughs> Man, I really hope I'm not wrong. Uh, 110? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Justin, what do you think? I was gonna guess like eighty, eighty-five. I was gonna I was, let's say eighty-five. Eighty-five. Damn. And then right, Luca, what do you got? Go. Eighty-five was also my number. I'll just say ninety. All right. Well, Jeez. I'm Alex, sweating now. You 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 were wrong. It is doing eighty-three point four to ninety-eight point three. So it never kills. Are they both in there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're both, both in, there. in there. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I only know that because I fought it and my ogre pawn had similar bulk, so it, I saw how much it took. <laughs> I think I only got one point on the board, although we were all misled by Lucas. I think we all whiffed on that one, right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> not as much as me, though. So <laughs> true, also... true, true. If we're counting mar <laughs> percentage off, then yeah. Uh, though I did take a pretty big hit in percentage off on this one. Um, hmm. Anyway, um... Yeah, my uh, my calc. I remember it's actually one from this weekend. Not one that happened at all, but I was at a premiere challenge this weekend, and we were talking about Carson's team and uh, talking about that illamize, that infestation that it has. Um, <laughs> how much is infestation doing to shift tree? <laughs> uh, all right, but I us, please give us so. numbers. No bulk shift tree. Uh, the shift tree. The shift tree has zero bulk across the board. 
Uh, no, not even four. Let's just say it's four in the other uh, defense. So, yeah, zero, zero, <laughs> shift tree. And uh, Illumise also has zero offense, but it does have 31 IVs. I'm not going to tell you if Infestation is physical or special, by the way. You have picked two Pokemon. I don't even know Illumise base stats, honestly. I yeah, don't know I was its base say, stats. You picked two Pokemon, Pokemon where I don't know any of their base stats at all. Like, no. Can, can you tell me the base stats and the power of Infestation? Because I don't know that. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> you are... Unfortunately, Luca, you're using a shift tree, and you're facing down Illumise, and you're not killing it this turn. So you have to think, is my, how how... How well is my shifter taking this attack? Can I know the stats of Illumise at least? No. <laughs> no, you get no no, you, no, no, no. you saw it on the, the team sheet and you're like, well, you're... I got it, I got it. Is Infestation special or physical? I'm almost you guys have no, Don't look up I'm anything. Yeah, don't, I don't want you to know anything. I think it's special. I think it's special. Uh, I don't know its base power. I want to say 20. <laughs> oh, I had 30 in my head. That's probably wrong. 20, it's 20 or 30. That sounds right. I don't think it's 40. Uh, right, I got a number. Okay. Well, All right, I'm going to guess. Okay. I think I got my guess. Uh, Adi, are you locked in? I'm locked in. Oh, yeah. Um. Okay. <laughs> so let's uh, let's start with Justin. Uh, let's go with 60%. 60%. Luca? I was gonna say sixty-five. That all that's right, Adi? Crazy, because I was gonna say sixty-three. <laughs> so just like, right. okay, none of us knowing any of the stats, we all had basically the same number. Yeah, yeah and it, I gotta warn you guys: infestation is on the lower, and it's twenty BP. Ah. Uh, oh. Um. That's doing less. That is doing thirty-six point three to forty-three point six. We count yep. the image. Do we count yeah, yeah, we, that's everything. You got it all there. Um, I, was, I was talking after a tail glow, actually. Is that oh, tail whoops. Glow, uh, is, <laughs> Illumise is doesn't optimal. get tail glow. It's it doesn't only, get tail glow. Only Volbeat. <laughs> Wait, it is a special yeah. attack, right? Yeah, everyone, it is. Everyone that was doing this calc at the local we were at was like, oh, this is doing so much, like over, well over it, half. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, dude, it's, it's pretty pathetic. Powers, not doing I, work. I couldn't remember if Illumaz was the one that had the higher attack or special attack. I, I know one of them, I, they're swapped for one of them, but I didn't know which. Illumaz mm. has the higher special attack. It is base 73 special attack. I guess I don't know if okay. that's higher or lower than Volbeat. Uh, no, no, I know they're, in, they're uh, inverted for their attack uh, and special attack. Wait, Volbeat has Tail Glow? And Illumaz doesn't? Yeah. yeah but Volbeat think... has a base 47 <laughs> special attack? You gotta balance yes. it somehow. Well, it has, you, you're, you're baton passing if you're doing anything. You're like tail glowing, then baton pass. Into a good Pokemon. Butterman, yes, because it would be too powerful to let the base 73 special attack Pokemon have priority tail glow. With bug typing and like a set that's not higher than nine. No stat higher than 85. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, we gotta balance these Pokemon, guys. We can't make them too strong. <laughs> All right. Uh, and so that is going to wrap it up from us. Thank you all for tuning in. This was a lot of fun. Um, and if you mm -hmm. missed any part of this and you want to uh, rewatch it, you can check it out on my YouTube channel on Wednesday. That is youtube.com slash C slash CK49 BGC. So make sure to check that out. Um, thank you, Luca and Justin, for coming on. And congratulations once again for, for uh, top cutting the uh, Peoria mm -hmm. Originals. Um, did you all have any... Uh, anything you wanted to plug or any shout outs or anything like that? Uh, Luca, you can go first. Oh, uh, no, nah, I got no no shout outs. Yeah, I, I, I'm chilling. <laughs> it's like, I'm the best. It's all me. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to my building buddy, Ally. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, my fiance was with me all weekend and supported me and she... Uh, Carl Strauss uh, said that she must really like me to hang out with a bunch of sweaty nerds that play Pokemon all weekend, so I got that going for me. <laughs> so, yeah, Hell yeah. It. Awesome. Well, yep. yeah, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we're going to send you over to Tom Hayden, who is streaming the the real Mickey LeMouseathon, apparently. So uh, <laughs> go go tell him where you came from and uh, go root for him in this, um, this online tournament. And yeah, with that, awesome. we'll catch you guys later. Peace out, peeps. Bye-bye. So...